That's all I'm muscle going hamster. <laughs> Yo, the Detroit is coming out way yes. too early. Test, test, test. <laughs> we are okay. all right. Great. We're pressing on the two. audio now. Let me make sure of this. Thank you, hamster. We trying to get verified like you one day. Okay, we trying to get that <laughs> check mark. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. Hi, Hi Stevie <laughs> Boo. We just low low LTB, y'all. Yes, we are. Audio good now. Hey, Steve, Audio's good perfect looks. now. Audio's perfect. Oh man, we lit now. All right, y'all, y'all ready to get it rocking? Yeah, yes, let's sir. talk our shit. We'll All right, yo, let's about. start with an interesting topic that just surfaced out of nowhere last night. Um, Lloyd Banks was on K Shine and DNA's IG Live. They were just talking about battles. And Lloyd Banks felt a little frisky, had a comment in the IG Live section, thinking it would just breeze on by. Nobody would screenshot it or watch it. Wrong, okay. Banks. We watch <laughs> and see everything. He said, end quote, I'm getting the John John the Don the fuck out of here. Yeah. That sounds cute. <laughs> and John that John caught cute. wind of it, and he let it be known. Why is Banks talking like I won't punish him? Mm. Uh, Vlad, the PLK, the Punchline King, does he stand a chance in the ring? And does he stand a chance against John John the Don? Your thoughts? I would be a fool to bet on Lloyd Banks at this point. I've seen how these celebrity returns have gone. And most of the time, they have not gone the way of the celebrity. John John the Don is a consummate professional, all right? He, every time he's out here, he's giving you 110%. And he's either winning or it's a super close edge by the other person for Lloyd Banks to think he's just going to jump in the ring and take out one of the best, most current active guys right now. It's preposterous, yo. Cece, what's your take on this? Like I said, it always sounds cute. It always sounds cute until it co comes time to stand on that damn stage and face John John or some of these other vets that are dangerous and you think, and your little friends around you tell you, oh, man, you can do it, man. Fuck John John, he ain't shit. Man, that round was fire. <laughs> man, you gonna smoke his ass. And then when you get on stage and you spinning your bars and everybody going like, oh! <laughs> like, like I said, like, everything you said, Vlad, no. Like, so, but I wait, but, my, but like, I, I gotta I ask both of you. I would say this. I'm going to be positive. Now, okay. I know Lloyd Banks. He's tapped in the culture. He watches battle rap. He fucks with battle rap. So I'm not trying, I'm not going to say he's trying to be a culture vulture. I'm not saying that. But there's levels to this. There's levels. Let and me ask John, both John, of you John, this. the first one you should want to battle. I agree with that. But let me ask both of you this. In an environment where there's no audience and it's just pure rapping, this is not, this is not the best chance he has? Listen, friends, there's a thing called cadence and rhythm and some of these guys are just stuck in the era that they were the most popular in i've seen it happen time and time before where you have an older veteran mc freestyling and rapping with a new age rapper and they just sound a step or two behind in the game and that's what i'm afraid would happen with lloyd banks he'd sound like he's rapping on a timbo track or something like that and just trying to keep up and over a while you're going to realize there's definitely a different pace and a different rhythm when it comes to playing ball over here on this side of the game. <sighs> I mean, like I said, are we like Lloyd Banks, that's cool. Like if you want to get into the culture, you want to back up the culture, you've always been showing love to the culture, but I I, I don't even want to entertain this because it's like But salute to Lloyd like, Banks though man. He, he's willing to sacrifice himself for our entertainment. And in the corona era, you gotta tip your hat to that man. It's like, if you're willing to do this, we are going to watch in a lot, all right? And, and I'm going <laughs> to laugh at your ass when you're getting killed. I'm going to be like, ha, ha. No, but I hope you, no, listen, ass, all, jokes aside, know though, all jokes aside, all jokes aside, I know I predict him to look a little slow, to look a little uh, behind, but I hope he does amazing. Like, I hope he comes out there and really tears it up and shows people like, yo, this is possible for a known rapper to come out and perform like, like I'm one of the guys that has been out here. Like, I, this is what I want to see one day because then it helps the game get bigger. Because if Lloyd Banks can come out and be fire, then other people start looking around and going, yo, this is a possibility. Like, we don't Look, have to be crazy out here every time. Vlad, real quick, before we go on to the next topic, Rita's in the chat, shouts to Rita. Henny Man's in the chat, shouts to Battle Rap Trap. I was mm -hmm. in a section with both of these guys at Resolution. 
And the first 90 <laughs> seconds of Cassidy's round, our eyeballs have never been so big because we saw all the money flowing into battle rap. And yeah. for, a, for at least 90 seconds of our lives, we were convinced that Cassidy figured it out. <laughs> and when an industry no. rapper, when an industry <laughs> rapper figures it out, it's like, oh, it's about to, it's about to be a whole whirlwind of different activities in this culture but then you know there's still a lot of the battle left to go through so yeah man and there's still that little weird separation where it's like you know battle rappers feel like the industry guys don't want us in on this side so then the battle rappers are like we don't want the industry guys getting preference over us over here but when that industry rapper decides to crack that code that is going to bring the best out of the battle rappers because they're now Ooh. looking like yo there's eyes on It's going to be melee in the culture. All kinds of bags going on. And if another one of these guys slip in here, oh, Lord, like, we can't have this, man. Like, so it's either everybody's going to have to step up, but the guy who cracks that Da Vinci code and is able to step out there, and I mean, clearly, what one of these battle rappers' asses is going to change the game, man. It's going to shock right. the world, you know. And I agree with Rita. 40 Cal, he's been good as far as some of these rappers – that are coming back into battle rap, you know, he's doing good. I, I ain't gonna shit on 40. Now, can he beat John John? Hell no. But I'm saying, 40 doing his thing. He's he's all right. I mean, 40 has been doing all right. That don't mean that all y'all can do it too. But I'm looking that's for that like, rapper that's friend. gonna, like, that that's gonna. That don't mean all y'all can do it. I'm looking for that rapper that when the whole weekend is over, you're talking about him how crazy his bars were, how crazy the delivery and performance was. Any man Not says Banks is going to die. Yikes. He, he probably will. I mean, you know what what about? <laughs> it's just like I watch his fun <laughs> flex freestyles. You know, I'm listening, I'm listening to hung, like, Hunger for More. I'm listening to all these. I'm like, how can Banks just, just go up there straight up die? I, just, I, I think he at least gets around. That's just me. What? That's, that's as generous as I'll go. I have that much respect for the essence of hip hop to not think that one of the best punchliners ever would just flat out die in a battle, especially if there's no audience. Now you put a crowd, I, I feel completely different about that. I hear you playing, I hear you. All right, let's move on to our next topic. Let's, let's, uh, let's start us to the chat first so we break this down. Daylight calls out K-Shine. He says that he wants to battle K-Shine. He said this more than once on mm -hmm. Hip Hop Is Real, on his IG Live. It looks like he has a plan for K. Sean. Like something's a little lined up, right? And he just battled Tay Rock, who was a former Dot Mob member. K. Sean, mm -hmm. a former Dot Mob member. And it seems like Daylight has his little trick up his sleeve to go back and get all of his past teammates, right? Let's throw it to the chat. Daylight versus K. Sean. Is that a match you guys want to see? And if so, who would you guys give the advantage to? Roberto Will says Daylight 2 1. Daylight yeah. Body says Auto Matter. Ooh. Oh, man. Ooh. Y'all don't feel like Sean got a chance? Y'all don't think Sean got a chance? After the run that he's been on? That's how you feel? Daylight with the advantage, says JP. Daylight just go against NWX. Uh, uh, Battle Rap Trap, I got Sean. Sean. Yeah, somebody right, got Sean. Finally, man. Somebody got Sean in here. Y'all ain't got no left for so Damn. Skane says Daylight 30 with a with a MF Doom icon. Of course you would wow. say that. <laughs> <laughs> Day 2, one tone deaf. Oh man, in this setting, daylight two one clear says Lil Reggie. Daylight ref shine without a crowd. I don't know. Daylight two one. Wow. Some of y'all saying these with conviction. I mean, K shine is good, but daylight will be too much says JP Junior. With no crowd, daylight two one. I think Shine could win, but Anwar will have him winning already. <laughs> you know your man, honey. All right, Vlad. You know your I, man. I spoke to Park, and he told me K-Shine was getting ready. Vlad, I'm going to throw it to you. Right. Do you think? For life, and he's going to win. Shout out. <laughs> and WX. Shout out to Anwar. <laughs> Can I do my job? Can I do my job? <laughs> Yo, if Barack Obama and Dave Chappelle merge voices it would be Anwar yo that's crazy you got the voice of two legends yo <laughs> salute to Anwar man all right Vlad I'm gonna throw it to you are you a little suspicious that Daylight is calling out K-Shine and what do you think of this potential match Vlad no not at all man this goes all the way back to Vendetta when Daylight was still coming up on the scene and he decided that if you were repping that colorful stuff we gonna have to question you when you come out here so you know they like did a couple of questioning and a couple of East Coasters were there and 
you know, one guy kind of like, you know, hey, I'm not with all that. And the other guy was K Shine, who was with all that. So it goes that far back to where Daylight was trolling and lurking. And now that Shine has been on top of his game and is fully legend status. Daylight is out there with the, uh, what's my man's name? Thanos Glove, man. And he's coming back. Yeah, he's coming back. Yeah, it's one at a time. And why not? He just took out, you know, Tay Rock, who's uh, the pit bull guard dog, and now stepping it up. He wants K Shine next, who was up in the ranking and who might be the number one dot of all time at this time. I mean, this is the thing, though. If Daylight is a replica of what we saw at Gnome X, it might, it might get scary for K Shine. Like, it might be another scenario where K Shine might look good losing though to daylight you know what i'm saying because just like with tay rock tay rock did his thing and he evolved he elevated but still just was not as good as daylight if daylight could stay consistent from this gnome x appearance it's gonna be scary and i'm not gonna say that it's gonna be a body because mm -hmm. i got more respect for k shine than to say it's just a body but um yeah i don't know i i, I don't know this was tricky. I'm here for it though. I definitely want to see this battle. I definitely want to see it go down. I definitely love the backstory of the fact that the dot mob angle and, you know, maybe some personals. You know, I always like some tea. I love some tea in the battle, okay? So I'm here for it. I got a little conspiracy about this, right? Okay. And I've been sitting on this and I've been wanting to deliver it. I hope uh, Henny Man's still in the chat. I think he'll like this. Uh, I thought about him when I was thinking about this little um, this take. So, this Gnome X kind of gave me a little bit of a flashback of Summer Madness too, right? Murder Mook and Loaded Lux, the top two names on the card. Murder Mook was kind of ahead of Loaded Lux as far as the way we looked at him, not necessarily in skill. And that night, it was a big shifting of the guard, where now Loaded Lux became that number one guy. Mook was the guy behind them. And they battled later down the line where there was a big discrepancy between, oh, well, now Mook is the underdog against Lux. Now, fast forward to Gnome X, you got Loaded Lux and Daylight, two guys that people will, will link, will probably edge to Lux, like, oh, he has the better pen, he's the better name, he's more accomplished, he's greater. And, and that same night, everything just flipped. Now Daylight is his heavy favorite. And we reverted to Daylight, like, okay, now he's the leading horse of this match, right? And they both battled the gun titles guys. It looked like they wanted to cherry pick those gun titles guys to then build up for their match. And now Lux, uh, Daylight's looking at Lux like, well, we need more of a demand from you now. I don't want people thinking that I'm just going to kill you. I'm going to go battle K-Shine, and I want to see you go battle somebody else. Because, um, interestingly enough, on to our next topic, Daylight says Loaded Lux should battle Ro Nitty. Oh, yeah, that match got to go down also. Yeah, Daylight says that Loaded Lux has never been in the ring with somebody that can punch. Let's go, Nitty. You know I don't take no nitty slander. So before okay. we before we chop it up, let's throw I it to the I people. No nitty slander. The mm -hmm. people, them. What do you guys think of Daylight saying Loaded Lux should battle Rum Nitty? Should it go down before Loaded Lux and Daylight? Do you want to see that match? Can Rum Nitty beat a Loaded Lux in the small room? What do you guys think? Talk to us. We got Nitty from Lil Reggie. Suicide Squad 30 says Skane. Shine and Lux both got wrecked for daylight, of course. I'm a okay with Nitty versus Lux and why? Nah, straight to Lux versus daylight, says Mr. Canada. Mm hmm. <laughs> Beloved. 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 Nobody <laughs> want to see Lux versus Nitty. Oh! What did I have to say? <laughs> no slander. No slander. I want to see Shine versus Mook. I would like to see that too, Reggie. Well, for Freddie, Freddie, my bad. Vlad, I throw to you, I, like I actually I do agree. I don't want to see Lux and Nitty now. I want to see Lux and Daylight. But it looks right. like Daylight, you know, he signed that three battle deal with URL, so he still has a couple other obligations. Uh Twerk and Nitty was a part of his three battle deal. Now he doesn't want to battle Twerk anymore. So mm -hmm. it looks like before we see Daylight and Lux happen, we're gonna see some more daylight activity, which could ruin a little bit of the suspense for the battle because he might not have that same allure for the next two, three performances. But I still want Daylight and Lux first. But if it doesn't go down that way, I don't want Lux to sit around waiting neither. What do you think, Vlad? Nah, I absolutely want to see Light and Lux do it now. Pause. That sounds crazy. But I definitely want to see them <laughs> battle first because the fans are demanding this now. You know, this is one of the first times that you clearly get to see 
you know, Lux be an underdog in a battle, like a clear <laughs> underdog. Everyone's got daylight. Everyone's got daylight. My thing is, I feel like Lux decided to do the surf what surf did to read, where he decided like, yo, listen, man, all right, I can lay off the brakes just a little bit on this battle. And we didn't see the full looks that we could have seen. He could have got way more aggressive. He could have crowded up Surf a whole lot more. He could have made that battle look different. And I think him now being in the position of underdog, he's definitely going to remind people. And I think this is a good thing. You're getting them at a great time, man. When else are you going to get daylight off the bullshit, 100% on the rapping, and you still got Lux in high demand because people are talking about him nonstop due to this Surf battle. So... URL, man, they know what's good. They know what the people want. And I think that's going to be the battle they're going to end up delivering first. I don't know, because it always seems like every time Lux battles, he takes a little vacation. Mm. So I don't know. I don't know how fast this battle is going to come, but I'm here for it either way. I'll be patient. You know what I'm saying? I got patience. But uh, I definitely would like to see Nitty battle on um, Lux, you know, before he's you know, done and, you know, good. You know, I think Nitty deserves it. I think Nitty, just like Geechee, we always talk about Geechee, but Nitty, he's also been doing his thing for years. He's been holding down the culture. He's been giving us big moments. He's been showing us that he can handle the big stages, the big opponents, the legends and all that. I definitely think he should definitely get Lux. Um, and I think he would want to uh, battle Lux before it's all said and done. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, I definitely want to get the... Uh... The Daylight and Nitty battle, we can hold off on that because, you know, the trend is mm -hmm. when Nitty gets out like the LSC guys and the fellow West Coast guys, it ends up being more of scrimmages and Nitty's not going 100%. And not for nothing, I don't know how many more battles we're going to end up getting out of some of these guys. So I, I don't want That's that competition level being lowered and him not going 100% because it's one of his fellow West Coast guys. Like, I need to see Nitty at 110 every single time. So we can hold off on that or they can do that somewhere else. But nah, we're not skipping that. I mean, just like with Geechee. Geechee's been saying it a few times that he looking to retire. You know what I'm saying? And I think that I wouldn't be surprised if Geechee is kind of in that same boat. Like, you know, I've been holding it down for a few years, like for a long time. You know, I've been doing my thing. But, you know... There's other things that these two guys want to do. You know what I'm saying? These Battle two, rappers these two never be rappers retire. and be successful in the future. So, Battle rappers never mm. retire is a great segue to our next topic because um, there's been a lot of rumblings from the media, from mm. you know some of the rappers. It's always been a demand. It's been a question every other three, four months. Is Conceited going to come back to Battle Rap? Once mm. Nick Cannon and Wildin' Out um, Man, was, was, was let go from their network, <laughs> um, <laughs> conceded DM the URL, playing around, said, hey, big head, when's the next, big, when's the next Summer Madness? Um, <laughs> Henny Man just watched Conceded and Be Magic on his channel, talked about uh, some of the traits of Conceded, what have he returns. Hip Hop is Reels uh, is also speculating a Conceded return. A lot of us have been doing so. So I want to ask the people, will we see a Conceded return in Battle Rap this year? If so, against who? Who yeah, Nitty. that? Miss Marla no. says no. Frey says no. Hey, Marla. Salute, Marla. Salute. Yes, he Salute. needs the money. No, Reggie says not with not no with crowds, no I, I don't think. <laughs> it can only be Nitty or Rock. Con versus Rock. Shout out to Miss Marla. Thank you for the prop hey, gang. Hey, salute, prop gang. Miss Marla. Always repping. Hey, y'all go look up Marla, man, on Twitter and go get some earrings from her shop, man. I don't know the name of it right now, but she definitely got the earrings, man. So salute Miss Marla. She just, she just launched. Business. She if, you, just if, launched. You're, if you're in the chat, please feel free to plug your, your small business. Yes, because <clears throat> we might be <clears throat> doing things. Con versus Cassidy or Con versus Rock. <sighs> don't allow really him to get Con nitty. Con versus Cassidy. Marla got the earring drip. Yes, she does. Got to see a newer guy than Rock uh, versus uh, so Con mm -hmm. and Nitty. Past Con and Conceited. No. Um, wow. It's a Don't lot of allow him to get Nitty yet. I guess he got to earn Nitty. Is <laughs> that what you're saying? Yeah, well, he got to earn his uh, way to Nitty. Okay. Okay. Vlad, I'm going to throw to you. <laughs> Vlad, I'm going to throw to you. Well, do you think we'll see a Conceited return to Battle Rap? And if so, against who do you want to see him return against? 
I think we will see the return, but I don't think we're going to see it in this format. I think Conceded is very image conscious, and I think he knows where he does best at. That's when there's a crowd there. That's when he can stop looking the crowd and everyone can say, slow it down. And he could use his charisma to really take over. You see what's happening, man, with these places, you know, with the echoes, you know, but it's nice in here, though. I like it. You know what I mean? There's an echo. There, there's, there's, there's no hiding anything. Like, there's no trichanery that you can do. Like, you got to really bring it. And I think he's smart enough to know, like, you know what? This may not be my time. Let me wait till people can step back out. The ladies can come out to the show and I'm going to execute my return there. The money will be back. I am skipping out on these empty rooms with the echoes, but it's nice in here. I like it. I think it was an echo. It was an echo. <laughs> but uh, look, I said, this is what I said. I said, I would like to see Khan back, but I would like to see him maybe as a judge for Ultimate Madness too. That's what I thought, like, if he doesn't battle, that would definitely be a good thing. He knows how to promote. You know, that's the thing about Khan. He knows how to promote. He's on social media. He got that wilding out fan base. I mean, if y'all have not been paying attention to him, go on his IG page. This motherfucker gets so many likes, so many views, so many comments on just posting his sneakers. Like, these wilding out fans do not sleep on them. They love these guys and to have Khan come back to the sport would mean more eyes, you know, more caffeine signups, more maybe subscriptions for the app. You never know. All that good stuff. So I would like to see Khan. More room um, the I budget for you They don't want to see him battle because I guess they don't think he's going to do a good job. He might be a little rusty. He might disappoint us. But um, I don't know. I guess it's up to Khan. Maybe he doesn't want to battle. Has anybody even asked Khan what he wanted to do? Man, Khan's getting well, too much. There was there was one day Khan conceded in DNA. Yeah, conceded in DNA on a live stream once playing 2K. And everybody in the live stream 2K chat was like, Khan is ducking nitty. And DNA pointed out to Khan, like, hey, you know, they're saying you're ducking nitty. Khan's response was, I don't give a fuck about that battle rap shit. <gasps> and, and, and that clip, that clip, I was not, I don't know if that clip was just him being arrogant. Or that's how he really <laughs> felt. But I will say this much. Like, when he made his return back in 2014, because he took a little bit of a, some time off from 2013, he mm -hmm. pretty much had to come back to CB Magic, who was the punchline guy at that time. Remnini's now a punchline guy of this generation and probably of all time for everything he's accomplished. It would be strange to see him come back and not see Nitty anywhere along the lines in his schedule. And, you know, you, URL don't let you just come back for one. They make you sign for more than one always. Mm -hmm. they exactly. may well, if, they may, if they make Cassidy sign a multi-battle deal, <laughs> they will definitely make Conceited sign more than one battle. I said, man. Well, Freddie said that Cortez said, Khan, don't even watch Battle Rap no more. So there goes my idea for him being a judge because it's like, well, shit. <laughs> well, I, I, hear, I, I, hear, I hear differently. I, I hear differently because... <laughs> that was my idea. In the trash. <laughs> well, we spoke we spoke with Hitman a while back, and Hitman let us know, oh, Khan spars with me all the time. Khan still watches battles. Khan is very sharp. So I hear I hear two different things. I hear he doesn't watch battles. That's why we gotta I hear Khan. I hear that yeah. he's very still in tune behind closed doors. And I will say this much: the performance, the aura, the comedic timing, um, the punchlining, the writing, it doesn't all go away. You know, you don't want to perform in front of arenas with 30,000 people in attendance, sold out venues and lose that aspect in battle rap. I don't think it goes away. No, Maybe that's the fact. And in fact, being on a Wild and Out, we, you know, France, we always call it Wild and Out University. It only enhances all of your attributes. You only get better. So when you return back to that stage, we've seen it with Hitman. He looked like he elevated his game. We've seen it with Sharon. He, Sharon's always on a Sharon, thousand. Yes. Charlie Clips, you know, he suffers from lazyitis. You know what I mean? So from time to time, <laughs> He's not going to display it all the time, you know what I mean? But when he's on it, he's on a bean. But, we love you know, clips. And, and but, um, not in a big crowd, man, he will use all of that to his advantage. And that's his best bet, yo. It's not these empty rooms where the echo is different, man. It's in that big crowd. I want to say this, too. Uh, as far as Conceda's return, like, he, he, like you said, like, he's so brand conscious. So he'll be mm -hmm. so aware of what he's getting himself into. 
Mm-hmm. And the fans do this thing all the time, right? When you haven't battled in a long time, it's kind of like they, they have this revisionist history of your catalog. And it's like, ah, well, it wasn't really that good. Then he returns and has a good performance. And it's like, oh, man, that's conceited. He's one of the greatest punchliners ever. Well, which one is it? Is he not that good? Or is he one of the greats that, that Nitty needs to solidify his legacy? It can't be both. Oh. Yeah, fans can be fickle, but that's why I'm saying somebody need to interview Khan and ask him these questions because I think it's a lot of speculation. Does he want to battle? Does he not want to battle? Does, you know, maybe he got other things going on. Maybe Nick Cannon is working on another deal that he can bring Wildin back out, you know what I'm saying, on a different platform or whatever because for what we hear, MTV owns the rights a while and out. You know what I'm saying? So who knows what's going on and who knows all of Khan's options that he can kind of dip and dab into. But I'm just saying, for me personally, I wouldn't mind seeing Khan back into Bad Rock because people have been missing him. I've seen people all the time, especially when we talk about punchers. When we talk about punchers, everybody talks about Conceited. When we talk about some of the best battlers we've ever seen, people bring up Conceited. There is a, there is a fan base that would love to see Khan come back. I don't want mine to see Khan come back, but like I said, I will say this. You got, you don't, it, I'll, mm, I'll say this. Don't if, come back and be trash. That's my Walla, If Walla now doesn't come back, if Viacom ends up giving Nick Cannon the boot permanently or he can't take Walla out anywhere else, we will see Khan back sooner than later. Until then, if Nick continues his gravy train, Khan's going to continue collecting them checks, swimming backwards in that pool. I mean, there's a plethora of beauties around him all day long. He ain't coming back to get yelled in the face at for no nine damn minutes. But if you're he, a bitch, like, right? you know what? what? He's gonna be like, my pool. There's like a chef. You know what I'm saying? Like, there's like <laughs> look, 60, you know, one ladies around here. Do do I really want to get yelled at by Tay Rock right now? No. You know what I mean? <laughs> but if that if that check, if Uncle Nick can't cash them checks no more. We're going to see Conceited make his way back, man, to the URL. That's right. what I'm saying. You ain't got shit else to do, Conceited. Like, come on. Like, He's going to charge them to judge. Like, Khan is going to charge to judge. At least and, pop and, up on one of these battles. Like, I, you might, I, you I, might, you might get that. Let you Conceited go to uh, the first round of Ultimate Madness 2. Yeah, Let might. him pop up with his little ass. Everybody going to be talking about it. I bet you money. All right, guys. <laughs> Let his little ass show up. We and I two- say he little because I'm five nine, so he little to me. <laughs> we uh we got two more topics before we bring Fonz on our guest of the hour. This topic's a little so- more serious because there's been a lot of speculation over the last two and a half weeks. Once we got that Bloomberg article about uh, the 113 million dollar investment going into caffeine, um, people are starting to now question whether what's the real transparency between caffeine and URL's partnership. Although Beasley has already made it clear, caffeine does not own URL. URL does not own caffeine. Mm-hmm. Um, fans are confused. They're not liking some of the format. They 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 feel things are getting a little whitewashed, mm-hmm. right? And so I want to ask you guys: <laughs> You guys think Battle Rap is going commercial soon? Mm-hmm. What do you guys think in the chat? I said this five years ago, but did nobody want to listen to me? <laughs> Don't nobody want to listen to me? And I think the biggest uproar came from when Avocado and JB wasn't directing Gnome. Everybody's like, well, wait, what are, we, what are we doing? Why are we taking our directors out? What, what's happening? And everybody got real concerned. It was a real uproar. Yeah. I'm going to say this. Now, I, I, was, I was, when I heard about the caffeine and, you know, the hundred and so million they invested in, I was like, oh, that's, some, that's crazy. But then when I heard Fox, Mm. I was like, ooh, and I, ooh. Now, <laughs> now, okay, Lots. when it comes to media, you got to be a little careful. Now, if Smack and them have made it, got their paperwork and got the wording of this contract, like how it's supposed to be, then this is not going to be a problem, right? However, usually Fox media outlets are a little bit more conservative. And that's for anything. That's for anything, okay? I hope this does not affect our culture, but, you know, it, it did raise my eyebrow a little bit when I heard that Fox also is in 
cahoots with this little deal thing with Jerry. Okay. So that's what I saw in the article. So yeah. I hope this is not the case. But if something goes commercial, just like when you saw the guys like, you know, T Top and Geechee and them go on BET Awards, the hip hop awards to do that little battle rap thing. They couldn't say everything and everything. There are certain things they could not say. Even though they did bleep out other things, there are certain things they could not say. You know what I'm saying? I will, I will hope this is not the direction we're going to. I'm not really feeling that. I mean, we've seen already when they were rolling out their uh, uh, promo package that, you know, certain word got bleeped out here and there. And we're not really accustomed to that in battle rap. It's like, for what it is, good or bad, you can say whatever you want to. But now, you know, certain words here and there are definitely getting edited out. And you start to notice that. And then, you know, you notice, okay, URL's production crew couldn't do the event. And, you know, us as a culture, we know how we like our battles to be presented to us. So to be able to not get it, you know, in the full presentation that we wanted, it definitely hurt us a little bit. But at the same time, I look at it kind of like the gift and a curse. Like the gift part of it is, hey, caffeine realizes that JB and Avocado and URL, they know what they're doing when it comes to shooting this. Maybe we didn't know everything. So now we got to bring them back in the fold because we're going to look crazy if we don't. And we're going to look like we're just trying to do our own thing. So, you know, salute to them, hopefully for getting that together. And everybody deserves a <laughs> shot especially when you start in a partnership, it's a give and take, you know, yeah. if you're just getting everything, then what are they getting out of it? So I understand that, but now the culture has spoken. Hopefully caffeine will listen. All right. So yeah, and I know, um, okay. I'm, I, mean, I know Rita had asked like, what do they say about Fox? So for, for me to clarify, so with Fox, they are also in partnership and backing up caffeine. That's why you see Joy Taylor, for those who know her from Fox Sports, she does content as far as being a sports analyst and she got her own podcast that she does on her own in partnership with Fox. So she's on caffeine as well. But like I said, whenever you give a little piece to media outlets, conglomerates, or commercialized media, a little piece, you gotta be careful because sometimes that little piece can get a little bigger and a little bigger and a little bigger over time. I seen it happen with the company I work for. Gave a little piece, okay, as far as being a black urban conglomerate, and now that little piece is starting to get bigger and bigger. That's all I'm saying. I'm not saying this is going to happen. I'm just saying, just be careful because this is a subculture that, you know, this is our culture. We should not be having nobody dictate what we can and can't say or do. That's all I'm saying. So okay. I'm not trying to, you know, Right, Bring so, no alarms. I'm just saying you gotta be careful when you do business like that. All right. So I wanna I wanna bring up some clarifications and clear the confusion and smoke for anybody that may still be confused as to caffeine's involvement with URL, battle rap, the culture. First I wanna say when JB and Avocado didn't direct Gnome, although it was a shock, let's be honest. What when was the last time they didn't direct the battle rap event? What was the last time they got to actually be fans of an event? I'm not mad at them taking an event off and actually getting a chance to enjoy the aesthetics of it. And plus, this ensures job security because if caffeine doesn't do with the job to meet our standards as a culture, that means we're just going to look at JV and Avocado like, yeah, we need those guys. So that's further validation for those guys. They're not going anywhere. And they do so much for us already. You know, JV just shot six weeks of a season straight. I ain't mad at him low managing for one event. <laughs> and then a lot of us, you know, we gave Gnome, if we had to rate it out of 10, we probably gave it like a six, a seven. So think about their first event they directed. It wasn't that high of a rating. You know, that I'm not worried about none of that. Now the second part, right, being commercialized. Like as far as we know, com being commercialized just means you're designing something for financial gain, for profit. And URL's biggest goal with caffeine necessarily wasn't profit because Beasley said on 15 Minutes of Fame, if I wanted to make more money, we could have stood the route we were going, but a brand new battle rap fan is probably not going to pay $50 for a pay-per-view, right? And you guys are familiar with the artist Keith Haring, right? The guy that makes all the fly design shirts. He has a famous quote, if, co if commercializing my art means putting my art on a shirt so a kid can afford a shirt instead of paying $30,000 for a painting, then I'm all for it. And as far as I'm concerned, what Caffeine is doing with this commercialization is just making it to a wider audience, which is what this culture needs. It needs more eyeballs. It needs more fans. It needs more casual fans. 
it needs more people around the world watching. Uh, I don't necessarily see it as a money thing because if money has to be sacrificed so we can get a bigger audience, more fans and more people learning about the culture, that's great. Because all of us who are hardcore fans and aficionados, like there's things that we have to go back and track. Could you imagine if you started brand new from scratch tomorrow? You didn't know anything about battle rap. It's overwhelming the amount of it's overwhelming the amount of information mm-hmm. and battles you have to go back to and storylines you got to catch up with and forget the media outlets is out there. It, it, I can make a list of every media outlet, good, bad, credible, or not. There's so many people out there to follow. That's a fact. You know, one thing that I will say and commend Caffeine for is that no material had to be edited as far as like certain words that were said because there was a couple of words that I heard that there I was, was that like. Effort. I was like, I was the, like the alphabet oh. boys going to pull up anytime soon now, but I was like, hey, they let it oh. rock. So, you I know, one so good. That We're in the clear. say whatever you want to say, you know, they kept it funky. So I got to salute them on that. Real quick. And, and last thing, if people are concerned about the quality, keep in mind two things. We're still in a pandemic, so we're not going to have venues for quite some time. And two, I know maybe the qualities of the battles on caffeine feel like, oh, I'm not getting my fix. There's been eight live events with caffeine, and every event in caffeine has had a choke thus far. So caffeine, as far as stony events, CPR is 100%, because there's always a choke <laughs> in one event on a caffeine stream. So maybe you got a question of battler's quality. Maybe the aesthetics can be fixed a <laughs> little bit. There you go. <laughs> uh, there you go. You just had, you had, you, you could not. Could it help myself? You could not say CPR. <laughs> but the problem is I'm not lying. We're we're in an era we're in an era now where I'm almost have to anticipate a choke every event as opposed to oh, being clean rapping. No, I mean, but we just gotta no, too, like, no, we gotta do better. No, the two I'm weeks not here prep, though. I the two weeks prep definitely doesn't help with that. You know what I mean? And I think we're just at a new standard, at a new pace now. We're at a pivotal point in battle rap where these guys are trying to turn around content bi-weekly for you every time on the dot and there's going to be some bumps in the road when it comes to that because we got MCs who are used to having a month three months to write for someone now it's like two weeks yo I got somebody for you do you want this check yes you're on you know and we're gonna have some stumbles we're gonna have some chokes here and there but we're gonna start seeing a new breed of MC who's gonna be able to deliver fire content every two weeks where we didn't think this was possible in the past before we're almost at that point. We're not quite there yet, so don't don't kick me in my throat. You know what I'm saying? But we are getting there. And I like I like the the the, the icon we use for this topic. Banksy throwing his flowers, right? Using his, <laughs> using, using his art as a weapon because battle rap. That's this is like a really pure art form, and that's why we're so protective of it. And we're so protective of it, even with brand new fans. If they like, oh, I can't wait to see a verb versus Sue Surf. It's like, bro, what are you talking about? That happened six years ago like right. no i've had that's real shit i've had to like have to like actually actually like delete a tweet because i was about to say dumb ass they've already tweet i'll be like okay you knew you knew i can't be mean if you like don't if know you don't know if but we're like, vicious with new fans who are uneducated battle. imagine with <laughs> investors oh my <laughs> Nah, man, brothers put on them boots. They be like, what were you like? This, this is the thing we know we need like if, cause I've heard Beasley and Smack talk about they want to be able to do battles and sell out arenas. You're gonna okay. This culture is big, but if you want to try to sell out arenas, you're definitely gonna need to start tapping in bigger markets. Well, like, we've, we've, we've been to some of the biggest events. You know what I'm saying? They're probably so. three thousand people in the building. Period. And three thousand people that's is a stretch. And three thousand ah! is three thousand is no, not a lot. Arenas. Arenas. Yeah, listen, I mean, the one thing Not that, venues, arenas. The one thing I'm that talking caffeine, about the only part that's not sold is behind the stage. <laughs> you got to sell everything else around it and the floor. Mm-hmm. No, that's the, a lot of people. The one thing that Caffeine also has been adding is that promotion. You know, without Caffeine, do we really see a commercial on Fox Sports? You know, like, do we really see that happening? That's do true. Do we really see billboards going everywhere? Some of these, uh, when these guys get different placings on websites or magazines, articles. This is not by accident. There's someone working behind the scenes. There's a publicist making it happen, making connections. Wow. And a lot of times it's companies who rock wow. the companies. And sometimes you just need a liaison to get you in the door. And I feel like this is where they're at right now, where they're like, okay, we'll trade you the streams for the promo. 
And then hopefully when it's time to either re-up or step out and do it on our own, we can use that promotional money that you've been putting in to URL and take it to the next level. I want to give a quick update, everybody. Uh, stay tuned. The show's about to get very spicy. We got Fonz Ooh. coming on in two minutes. 40 bars just oh, hit me up. 40 bars just hit me up. Say, you know what? I can squeeze it in today. So we're gonna oh, end. Hey, we're gonna yeah. we're gonna we're gonna close our last half an hour. We're 40 bars. Go stay forward. tuned for that. That's going to be really spicy. So we got about another minute or two before Fonz gets in here. We turn it up, man. I can't Come wait. On, 40. We turn Come it up, on. man. Come if on. you rock with us, oh man, salute Augie for the props. We truly SB appreciate Fonz. that. Every prop goes a long way. If you can, hit that Cash App LTVR podcast. We will salute Run you. Run it, How, Augie? What? Oh, come <laughs> on now, man. Salute for the props, Augie, but come How, on. While, while we wait for Fonz to join in real quick, CC, something I also wanted to touch on when I when I mentioned how, like, Battle Rap fans are so protective and they even jump on brand new fans for being uneducated. I feel like that happens a lot to the, the ladies that are fans of the culture because <gasps> fans will just, fans <laughs> love no, no, to no, be no. like, That's oh, you're... Y'all think we don't know. That's uh -oh. the problem. You think okay. because we're a female, uh -oh. we're on some groupy shit. And oh, I only like to watch this guy because I think he's cute and I want to fuck him. No. Oh. We know what the hell we're talking about. And I hate that shit. Let, let, Stop let her, trying let her to come cook. at every female battle rapper fan like we're only here because we're trying to get saved or trying to get close to these niggas. No, we're not. Excuse me. I hate that shit. Stop doing that. Like that, like I hate that. Do you understand how many times I've seen girls be like, yo, I think this person won and It'd be a whole thread of men just trashing this girl because of her thoughts. But it'd be the same guy talking about, yeah, I think this guy, the same, the same tweet. Yeah, this guy beat so-and-so. And it'll be a, a healthy dialogue or debate like, really? What round did you give him? Really? Dang. I didn't see it that way. I had him edging that round instead of this round. But okay, I guess mm. I can't be. It'd, be. it'd be way different. It's a different energy. Stop doing that. Whew. All right. I'm sorry. Oh, <laughs> my feminist has the smoke cleared. The feminist came out. The feminist came out. Y'all damn it. Yeah, yeah. And hopefully, no one ever tries to mansplain a battle to it. you because that'll be awful. Oh, no, I had to check a few motherfuckers <laughs> on Twitter. Don't get it twisted because, like I said, I don't need no backup. I got this. I oh, got this. Man. And I've had DM a few people like, do you want to? Yeah, I mean, okay. listen, my thing I is if the person's so. keeping Let's the same keep energy with rap. everyone, if Let's the person's keep keeping, if the person is keeping the same energy with their argument with everyone, then cool. But, you know, if you're just specifically picking out the ladies to go crazy on, it's like, come on, man. Like, you tripping. That shit you. whack as hell. Like, you don't, like, keep the same energy. Like, we like we understand bad rap is an opinion and a sport. But when a woman gives an opinion, y'all just want to go left field, like, thinking that she's only saying this because she liked the bad rapper on a physical level. But, no, maybe she really likes this bad rapper because of what, like, he's a puncher. And she likes punchers. Here's one thing I got to like, say, though, Why are you going there? Getting into the game as a lady. Baby, you gotta understand the battle rap fans are crazy. So. All right, let's uh, we we got the man of the hour on. Oh snap, Chad, CC, this is your this is your hometown hero. Let's go. So I'll let you guys let's do the go. honors, Vlad. Oh man, <laughs> ladies and gentlemen, let's go. We got, we got a special guest today. This guy is representing Cleveland to the fullest. This guy has just won twenty five k off that ultimate madness. He's not a new Jack. He's been doing this for a minute. If you don't know, Cleveland is where he's from. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Fonz to Let's Talk Battle Rap Podcast. Fonz, how are you, my brother? I'm doing great, man. Land of the heartless, man. What's poppin'? Mm. Oh, H! I -O. I O. What are they talking about, CC? Fonz, what man, they talking I gotta about? tell you. I gotta tell you, I'm originally from Brooklyn, but now I am a Cleveland transplant, so... When you uh -oh. were in the tournament, I was like, yes, I got a horse in the race. I know who I'm rooting for. Oh, yeah. On top of that, you was fire as hell anyway. So I had you go into the finals and whoever won was going to win. But I got to salute you, man. You held it down for, for Ohio, for Cleveland in particular, man. How does it feel, brother? 
You said I can't hear you. Now I was saying, how does it feel, man, to to take the chance? Oh, man, that shit feel good. You know what I'm saying? That shit feel great for real. You know, just to put on for the city. You know what I'm saying? Nigga, 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 niggas, you know what I'm saying, looking at me like I held it down for them. So, you know what I'm saying? That's that's something I set out to do with this shit, man. And then also, you know, to get to perform on known in front of all them people. You know what I mean? So that shit was a blessing. And now my pocket's dumb fat. You hear me? <laughs> yeah, Fons, I, I want to I wanna say something to you. All right, some battle rap history. If you look down the line of people that have inked their names as tournament winners, Jin, Fight Club Power Summit, Arsenal, the final Fight Club tournament, uh, Ill Will, UFF, T-Top, UFF, right? Uh, DNA, BT tournament, Thesaurus, Scribble Jam, Ilmac, Scribble Jam, uh, Thesaurus and Ilmac, WRCs, the list goes on. These are legends, veterans, elite names that have now cemented themselves in history. How does it feel to know your name is now etched in stone as a battle rap tournament winner alongside all these names? Man, that's the one right there, bro. You know what I'm saying? I'm the first person to do this one, the ultimate shit. So I feel great about that shit. And I feel like, you know, that's the kickstart of the career. You know what I mean? Uh-oh. I think your connection. Uh-oh. Let's get it together over there. Let's get it together. You got 25K. There ain't no reason for bad Wi-Fi no more, brother. No reason for bad Wi-Fi no more. Yo, my Wi-Fi official, man. It's too much. It's too many devices, man. You know what I'm saying? Probably uh-uh, tell people to cut up. Uh-uh. You start pulling the cords uh-uh. out the wall. Yeah, they on, they on Xboxes and all types of shit over here. Playstations, computers, all that shit. They're like, uh-uh. that is. That 25 cleared. <laughs> yeah, well. <laughs> hey, we, 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 yes, me, and Vlad, just dropped. me and Vlad had a pod before when it was um the 10K pot, and we talked about ways that guys could take that 10K pot and invest it. Now that it's yeah. damn near double and a half, 25K, well, obviously you splurge, nice dinner, shop Bro, a little, I even, right? I, I ain't even well, spend none of that shit, yo. I ain't spend none of that shit. I, yes, you. I was just gonna ask, Good investing wise, has that crossed your mind already? Like, how can I flip this twenty five to a hundred? Yeah, yeah, I'm just, I'm definitely thinking about keeping that shit circulating. That's why I ain't really fucked with it yet. You know what I'm saying? I was doing good for myself before that shit. You know what I'm saying? So right now, you know what I'm saying? I want to try to, you know what I'm saying? Get that shit circulating, man. Smart man, smart man. You're smart. That's what's up. That's what's up. Uh, I'll let the Ohioans in the building take over with the questions from here. Okay, well, everybody in the chat is already asking about you versus Ab. Now, I know you already called out K-Shine, and, you know, I feel like you you earned your right to call out whoever you want to hey. call out, but what do you hey, feel about fans saying that you should have called out Ab instead of K-Shine? Why? No, like, you know what I'm saying? Ab had the COVID at the time. But at that time, why would I call out Ab Ab got the COVID? You know what I'm saying? The COVID. At that time. You know what I'm saying? You said COVID, y'all. <laughs> That's the serious version. The Rona is the play play version. Yeah. This, you, okay, you said so why Corona. Was, if Ab, you said Ab was. And sick. then the thing is, and, then, and the thing is, too, like, nigga, Keshaw, probably mm-hmm. a little higher than Ab. You know what I'm saying? Like, if I get the big nigga, I'm knocking out that nigga. You know what I'm saying? This shit about leveling up. You know what I'm saying? Them niggas ain't putting their work. I'm trying to put in my work. You know what I'm saying? They putting their work. They're trying to put in my work. I hear that. Now, a lot of people will say, pen for pen, bar for bar, you and K-Shine, you guys could be right there. It's not like anyone would be leapfrogging anyone in that category. But some folks will say when it comes to performance and delivery and the way Shine is able to deliver those bars and dance around that stage, like, how do you feel? Your style and your performance with uh, Live Up versus K Shine. See, and, that, and that's that's the dangerous part about Shine that he, he got all those things. But right now, during this pandemic, ain't no motherfucking crowd, ain't nobody for you to dance for unless you want to dance for yourself. You know what I'm saying? Right now, right <laughs> you want to talk about dance. performance? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You know what I'm saying? Right now, I'm the vet, man. Right now, I'm the vet, man. So niggas, you know what I'm oh, saying, nigga? I got the most experience. In this set, in this set, I got the most experience. That's a statistical fact. We can't even argue that right now. Yikes! (laughs) Can't even argue that. Now, now speaking of that particular setting, we've seen some people have performance issues that night. But you and Jay, the Nightwing, the two quote-unquote rookies, 
were the mm -hmm. ones who had to walk out there, set it off. No one knew what to anticipate, not a slip up, not a stumble on your sides. Perfect performance by both of you guys. Great battle. What was going through your mind just walking out there for the very first time and being like, yo, this is different than anything any of us well, have ever it, it, it was It was kind of similar to what we was doing. Mm -hmm. You know, we was already in the small rooms with not a lot of people in it. But this room was damn near empty for real, you know. So it was kind of weird, you know, but it was kind of what we what we was used to already, you know what I mean? Now the cameras and all that shit flying around and shit, that shit was like distracting, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> I'm like, hold up. We ain't used to this right here. Right. But yeah, I wasn't, I wasn't nervous and none of that shit because I felt like no one was the win for me. So I just, you know what I'm saying? I was ready to put on. That's what's up. So how have people... Since you came back as the winner, how have people been treating you in Cleveland? I mean, they treat me the same. You know, I treat them the same. You know what I'm saying? Niggas, niggas proud of me. You know, so they, threw a little party, they, threw, they threw a little party from yesterday. It was going. We got the barbecue oh. yesterday. You know what I'm saying? So, yeah. I it, love it's, that. It's, That's yeah, they, they, they definitely been showing a lot of love. A lot of love. I was, I was walking down the street the other day. And a nigga pulled over, like, start talking about the tournament. Random nigga, you know what I'm saying? So it's been a lot of love out here. That's fire. Well, Man. I just wanted to tell you that Columbus, Ohio, that was rooting for you. And I know they've I been on know. my social media talking about, yes, we so proud of Fonz. We so happy for Fonz. He putting on not just for Cleveland, but for Ohio. So I definitely want to let you know that, too. And I want to let niggas know, too. Like, niggas keep talking about, Al, bro, no, no smoke get duck, man. You know what I'm saying? Don't no smoke get duck, man. Whatever niggas want to yeah. do. You know what I'm saying? And I still feel like ducks, even man. I still feel like even if you get the battle with K Shine, I feel like you and Ab will still be a great matchup. It's gonna be a crazy matchup and it's gonna happen. Like you know what I'm saying? It's, that shit gonna happen. But whenever if niggas talking like that's what they want to happen, then that's what'll happen. Like, you know what I'm saying? I don't know smoke get duck, duck, I'm a killer, bro. You know what I'm saying? Okay. That's what's up. Talk your shit. And I know you've been riding this new Midwest wave. Like, you know, and I know I see some of the vets from the Midwest say a little something, something about it. Like, what do you got to say about the vets that, you know, the Midwest movement, guys? You know, you got Cal, you got Verb, you got St. Louis, Chicago, Detroit, everybody doing their thing. What would you want to say about those that may feel some type of way about you saying it's the new Midwest? No, that's no disrespect to them. What I'm saying, you know what I'm saying, we just, you know what I'm saying, we... We, we lighting that fire back up that they started. At the end of the day, we all together. You know what I'm saying? Right. At the end of the day, nah, that's, this ain't no disrespect to them on that type of shit. We moving as a unit. Facts. That's Everybody's what's up. That's why that's I like you, That's why I fuck with you. Salute to Black Harris in the, in the chat. Fonz, he wants to know, were you hearing an echo in there? Yeah, you know, I heard it when Jay was rapping. You know? Mm -hmm. So that's, Jay why, was that's why, I, like, I did, like, Jay was yelling and everything. I was hearing, I was hearing like, what the fuck? So that's why when I rapped, I didn't like, you know what I'm saying? I kind of stayed a little bit more calm than he did because I was like, I'm hearing something. Mm. <laughs> I hear that. It's so you weird, like in-game adjustments. Yeah, okay. yeah, definitely. Yeah, I got to okay. ask you, when Jay was walking over to that plastic bag on the floor, like what was in your mind? Like, cause <laughs> I wanted to know what's in a keeper bag, bag on the floor. I'm like, what's going on right here? Man? <laughs> Yo, I wanted to know what the fuck was in that bag, bro. That nigga was carrying that bag. And he gonna say some silly ass shit to me. I said, bro, what the fuck is in the bag, bro? This is when we at the hotel. I yeah. asked him, like, bro, what the fuck in the bag, bro? You got props and shit? He told me, oh, no, this is carry my waters. I'm like, you could carry your waters with your hand? What the fuck is you? What the fuck is you? Now, I knew it was something my in the bag. Waters. He said that silly shit. He gonna say, this is carry my waters. <laughs> <laughs> Then the nigga go in the bag, he go in the bag and he throw a towel backwards, bro. I'm like, bro, if this nigga keep throwing shit out this bag, bro, I, I thought that nigga about to just keep going in the bag, throwing shit out of that bitch, bro. <laughs> that was low key his suitcase that he came with from Washington. Bro, I'm just saying, like, how? <laughs> like fucking deodorant, toothbrush. Where my glove right, at? Man, don't man. worry. Ah. <laughs> no, that was a fire scene, though, man. I also got to ask you, man, in your second round, the most memorable part, you had on the apron, you did the whole chicken wing scheme. You know, right. I'm, I'm new to Cleveland. You know what I'm saying? I'm actually in Brooklyn right now. You know what I mean? But I'm coming back in a little bit. 
If I need to get some wings, where Kim's. Go to Kim's. K I M S. Kim's. Yeah, yeah. Go to Kim's. Okay, okay. What part of town is that at? One time. That's on Saint Clair. Saint Clair. Oh man, I'm gonna have to Google that when I come back, man. Yeah. Go to Kim's. I'm going ham. Okay, Flair, I'm gonna come up from uh, Columbus. That's two hours. Hey, there you go. We're going to that, camp. That, that, the wings better be fired if I'm going to drive two hours. <laughs> <laughs> they better be the best. We're going to go live and if they're whack, we're going to be like, Fonz. <laughs> y'all are going to be the best. That's not how, because Columbus got work ride. to do. Yo, I'm, I'm with that. Right the Kim's wings. I'm, I'm with <laughs> that, man. We definitely got to do something, man, live when we, when we get back there. It's going to be crazy. Hell yes. Fonz, I, I want to ask, um, the second installment of Ultimate Madness 2 is coming up. Uh, first round matches is starting August 1st, next Saturday. Uh, any matches on that first round that you're really anticipating? And how's it going to feel now watching a tournament from the other side? I can't wait. Bro, I can't wait. I can't wait, bro. You know what I'm Just to be able to watch that. This is almost like pledging a frat. It. And like you crossed, and then the very next semester is another line pledging. You're like, oh, shit, I get to see the line pledging. Like, I, was, <laughs> I was just doing this. Right. I want to see Saga and Holmes. Mm. Mm. Who you got? Like huh? Who you got? I man, you know what? I filled out my bracket. I ain't telling niggas who I got because I'm trying to win that twenty five hundred. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> You're trying to get that money. Again, like, I ain't trying to say it with nobody. <laughs> I ain't I telling niggas who I got. So Saga and Holmes is your most anticipated match. Why is that? Because Saga, Saga dog, and he coming off that Mike P shit, and Holmes he feel overlooked. Holmes he feel like he, you know what I'm saying? Like, niggas ain't giving him some respect. That's about to be a war. And then I also, I want to see fucking Tinker franchise, bro. That's my most you know anticipated. Yeah. Yeah, I can't wait to see that one. Yeah, I can't wait to see it. Does Tink have any any ring rust, man, from being away? Or is he going to come out and just surprise us all? That's, that's Man, that nigga factor. Tink about to be looking crazy as fuck. He big as shit, bro. The nigga tight to the light. The light going to be touching him on the fucking head. You know what I'm saying? You know that little... The light we was rapping under and shit. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> that bitch gonna be touching that nigga Tink on the, on the head. <laughs> they gonna get electrocuted, bro. <laughs> the power of Morpheus hit my dorm. In the oh, dorm we got dorm. a question from Rita. She said, "Fonz, would you judge Ultimate Madness too if asked?" Hell yeah. Mm. You heard it here how first. Did you, how did you feel Hell about yeah. the uh, since we're on the topic? How did you feel about the judging throughout the entire Ultimate Madness one? Shit, I respected it, man. That's the judges they picked. How'd you really you know feel? Man? <laughs> See, you won the tournament. The judges in the chat. It's over now. You can tell you us how you really felt. Now, look, look, look. They, they. You know what I'm saying I respected it from the beginning. Yeah, they said some, like I think Rita said the one time she said some crazy shit. Uh, what she said? I forgot when I battled Kruger. Because he matched my energy. I like, no, that wasn't good enough. You know what I'm saying? That wasn't good enough because he matched my energy. But you know what I'm saying? I think knowledge, knowledge gave uh Jay the first round on the last one. I wasn't feeling that. But at the end of the day, that's his decision. He a judge. If you know what I'm saying, if the shit would have went his way, I would have respected. I wouldn't hold no grudge against that nigga. Now, you know, you just mentioned uh from uh, I believe you said Rita saying, oh, he had more energy. Do you? Yeah, this is like plant shit too. The plant shit. <laughs> <laughs> you know how I feel about plants. Listen, man, we all love plants. You know what I'm saying? I love but... plants too. I'm a plant mom. So, you know, Rita, you know, I'm a plant mom. I got two plants at home I take care of. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> Word. But do you, do you feel like there needs to be more explanation and more breakdown with the judging this go round? Yeah. Yeah, because we put a lot of effort into our bars, you know. I want I want I want I want to hear you talk about this shit. You know what I'm saying? If he beat me, then you need to tell me why he beat me. But yeah. Now I gotta ask I you, feel this, you. Now a lot of a lot of MCs are saying, oh, this person doesn't rap, so you know, their judgment is not valid, or you know, they don't understand bars the way I understand bars and setups and intricacies. Does it matter to you whether a person has rapped professionally or not in the past before to be a judge? No, I mean, niggas can be a fan of this shit, you know what I'm saying? Hip-hop and all that shit, just have an ear for that shit. Just because you ain't rap down me, you don't understand it. But oh, I would like to have some rappers on the board, you know? Because we say some slick shit, you know what I'm saying? And that shit might fly past a regular nigga head. We need somebody in our, one of our peers that, that's going to grasp this shit, you know what I mean? 
I hear that too. I do understand that. But uh, what advice would you give everybody that's participating in Ultimate Madness 2 that you thought might be good to hear before you had participate in Ultimate Madness? I told them that I would have clipped up from the beginning. Like, I didn't clip up. You know, I, I would have clipped up. When, once that COVID shit hit and they pushed it back, like, they didn't have a little time to clip up. You know what I mean? This shit going to start wearing on you. Mm. So start wearing on you, you know what I mean? So you need to clip up. I got to ask, what, what was your conditioning like in preparing in between rounds? Because you can kind of tell by Noam, you and Jay were a little fatigued. Like it, it obviously showed, but you guys just went through a crazy run to get to that point. So like in those two rounds in between, like what was some of your habits to perfect your rounds, to condition yourself, to get ready Man, for the... I ain't going to even lie. Some of that shit was like the rough draft we're going out there with. You know what I'm saying? Because I ain't had a lot of time to play with them, you know? I was writing my rounds late. You know, I still was working and doing all that shit. And I, was, I I just kept getting in the habit of starting my motherfucking rounds. Like the Monday, you know what I'm saying? The Monday, the, the battle on Saturday, on Monday, I'm starting my first round. You know what I mean? So Really? Yeah. Wow. That just, that just added, and that you just didn't added. forget nothing? Look at here. <laughs> that added pressure, though. You know what I'm saying? I wish I, I, wish I would have. Look here. <laughs> Oh. Now, yeah, your battle with Ace, I mean, controversial aside, physical stuff aside, when you look at the interview with Hip Hop Is Real and he's saying, yo, my material wasn't all there, so I was just here for the bullshit. And, you know, that was my main focus to get him off, you know, target and off his square and just like win it like that. As a competitor, as an MC, how does that make you feel to hear that he wasn't prepared at all and his game plan was to be on bullshit with you? And hope to get the win like that. How does that make you feel? I mean, like I, like I, you know what I'm saying? That's 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 crazy because we, I thought from the beginning, me and Ace would have had a good match. I respect his pen. Mm -hmm. You know, I think he got a nice pen. I told him too. I tell, I told, I told him all the time, you fucked the battle up. Ace you know what I'm saying? Not, but yeah, you fucked the battle up, like nigga. You know what I'm saying? You gotta, you know what I'm saying? You gotta push through that shit. You gotta be prepared. You gotta be ready. You know what I'm saying? I told him all the time, you fucked that, you fucked the battle. We probably would have had had a good, you know what I'm saying? It's also good. kudos to your pen too, because he knows, yo, if I ain't no, got no, no, he, he gets know, me he off, knows. I'm gonna look crazy. Like I'm gonna look crazy. Yeah, yeah. So I gotta and, fuck this up some way somehow. So yeah, he was he, he was scratching the claw for that shit too. He, he he was working, you know what I'm saying? What do you think about some people giving him the battle? Man, yeah, was, we had somebody in the chat saying that you lost to Ace. I don't know. Yeah, where they show, went. show yourself yeah, now. I don't know where they went, but you need to show yourself again. No, I ain't lose to Ace. I told Ace I won the first two clear. You know mm -hmm. what I'm saying? The first two clear. Oh, Q uh, Moody said Ace won the first <laughs> and the third. I'm here with it. Okay, you ain't scared. Nah, you got to go back. You got to go I back. Ace, 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 Ace had a lot of energy in that first. He had a lot, yeah, of, a lot of stumbles in that first two. <laughs> yeah, yeah, he had a lot of stumbles. And they said, oh, you stumbled. I stumbled when I go to set the bar, the nigga hit me with a little elbow while I'm saying the bar. <laughs> and nigga, hold up, you know what I'm saying? That's some old, that's some old veteran savvy tricks right that there. That nigga man. was on some Dusty Rhodes shit. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Oh, oh, wait a minute, Lil' Reggie said Ace 2 one two. Wait a minute, Reggie? Them niggas from Maryland. <laughs> <laughs> Maryland nigga, shout out Maryland. Maryland. <laughs> Maryland. That's true though. <laughs> he said, Reggie said he from Louisville. Yo, uh, Q, uh, where I you from me. though? You from the DMV, Q? You ain't low? Or uh, they said Louisville. I don't know what they be saying in Kentucky. Louisville. They say Louisville crazy. Louisville. Baltimore, like not that. DMV. Close enough. Close <laughs> enough. Word, but yo, a friend. You, now, now, URL and caffeine was like, listen, everybody's got to get this COVID test before they come to you. What went through your mind? Because I know I haven't done the test, but I've seen the test get administered. Yeah. And what was going through my mind? The process from them telling you to you actually getting the test done. Bro, when they told me I had to take that test, I'm like, bro, I don't want to cheat. <laughs> what if I got this shit? You know what I'm saying? Like, oh, what if I got you, As soon as you know you got to take the test, you start getting a little fake cough and shit. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> Trying to make sure you can taste and shit. So we go in that bitch. And it's me and my cousin and shit, because he was my uh, plus one. 
Mm-hmm. So, you know, we both had to take the shit. They stick that bitch so far up your nose, bro. Oh. I see that bitch, the diagram. It feel like somebody poked you, like, like right here. Is it like, sharp? Like, like, what does it feel like? Nah, you know what? That bitch just, like, make a little a little teardrop, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> it, you a little, it don't hurt, but it's yeah. like, that, you know what I'm saying? It's a funny-ass feeling. Ugh. It's a funny-ass feeling. That shit lasts for, like, 10 minutes after you do the shit. Damn. Hey, but no, when that I shit come back negative, one, everybody's I, happy as fuck. <laughs> I had to take one for work, and that I I really felt like it touched my brain. Like I don't know if it did, but I felt like it touched like my brain for real, for real. Like it goes far up your nose, and then it does like a little yeah. tingle, tingle in the back of your throat. Oh. I'm good. I was acting yeah. like a little bitch. I was oh, acting man. like a little bitch. Yeah, that, yeah. I do not want to take that, man. I kind of look at it like. I, I wish niggas run that bitch. Niggas run that bitch patient after that test, bro. <laughs> <laughs> it's like an STD affair. It's like, yo, man, it's no, better come I mean, back negative. <laughs> looking here, it's like you just looking at the nurse. That, I mean, for me, mine took like three days for mm. results. So yeah, it was like that. It was like I think it was like two days, three days. Yeah, like I heard that. y'all was quicker. I don't know what doctors y'all use. I was like, shit. Mine took about three days, and they're like. You know, you're good. I was like, whew, thank you, Jesus. I can go back to work. Caffeine so got that good insurance plan, yo. Man, they ain't playing. <laughs> they ain't playing at all. They're like, we need our rappers rapping. Get the testers, medicine. <laughs> <laughs> Man, they had a whole bunch of shit. They was talking about, oh, uh, y'all, y'all might have to. It's rumors. Nobody mm-hmm. from URL told us this, but it was just like rumors. Y'all niggas are going to be six feet apart. They will have a table between y'all. I'm like, what? I yeah. heard that. I heard a lot of bloggers were saying that. And I even seen Sue Surf. He said he had made a tweet talking about he wasn't happy because he heard that him and Lux would have to be six feet apart. And he was like, that's, it's like y'all are, y'all are fucking up the battle. So I did hear people was talking about that. Yeah, that's like, where I see this shit from Surf. And I, I, I was like, what the fuck? I started calling niggas and shit. You know what I'm saying? Like, what the fuck? You know what I'm saying? I'm like, this shit's still going to work in my favor. You know what I'm saying? But, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I thought that's what niggas was doing. Then they clarified. Me too, because I seen Surf say the same thing. So I was like, wait a minute. What? Right. right. So when you think about your performance, what you about to come in here and do. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. You got to go ahead, go ahead and switch the whole, whole demo up. You know what I'm saying? Right. Which I, like, you know, I see some fans saying, oh my God, just get through it. Who cares? But I'm like, okay, we got to take a, we got to take a step back. You know, if you coming into a battle with a certain mind frame, how you going to approach somebody and then you tell, and then you have somebody tell you, nah, you got to give them six feet. That might fuck up the approach you was going to have. You, you know what I'm saying? Like that could fuck up a battle. Right. Well, you know, sometimes fans we don't always understand. I get it. I wanna, I wanna, I wanna put this out there, and, and um, I noticed throughout the rounds, your first round, you and crew were pretty close on the polls. Second round, you and Easy pretty close on the polls. Uh, mm. You and Ace, it was, was, it was a bit of a landslide. You and Jay depends who you're asking. They might have had Jay the favorite, you the favorite. Is it more pressure when you're like the clear favorite to win a round? Yeah, I hate that, bro. I hate that. I hate that, bro. It's more pressure. I feel like it was like when J400 came to Cleveland, it was more pressure that that nigga was at my house versus if I would have went to Jersey. You know what I'm saying? I, like, I you was posed at the, that battle. Yeah, yeah, you, posed to, you posed to win this shit. Like everybody got you winning, you posed to win this shit. I love being an underdog. I think the poll that had J80%, me 20%. I love that shit. Oh, damn. You know what I'm saying? You know that's what? why, I I, that's why when all, niggas talking all that shit, Talking all that shit about Sean, you know what I'm saying? That shit right there, that's fire for me. You know what I'm saying? Okay, Being the underdog, so, I love it. So, okay, now I was there. Now yeah. I was there in Cleveland, okay? And I think it was Born Legacy 8. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Okay, Born Legacy 8. I drove up to Cleveland for that shit. And I had you winning. No disrespect to J400. I fuck with him, but I had you winning. But, um, so, are you saying, are you saying that you feel like you get more ammo and more like fire to win because you're the underdog. You like being yeah. the underdog. I love being an underdog. I love being an underdog. So I people should probably come pay out attention like- with you and Shine because you're the underdog by a landslide. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 
That's cause fight you know, for me. Because you know what that's that will do. They'll be like, oh, what happens when the, what happened when the, when the, when the clear underdog come through and smoke niggas' favorite? See, you know I, what I'm saying? I, I get what Fonz is doing now because in battle rap they'll be like, Fonz is the new punchline guy. Nobody could beat him. He's amazing. And you're gonna have that run where it's like, you know, when everybody loved Av, like no one ever had a bad thing to say. And that's then they a just wait for that moment. To like all of a sudden drag you down. So Fonz is like, fuck it, man. We're going to get it out the way. I'll be the yeah. underdog. You guys can say I got no chance to put niggas in their place off top. The yeah. Right now. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, put niggas in, in their place off top. They're going to they stop doubt. Absolutely. Okay. So right. if you get this battle with K Shine, because I don't know, I mean, you can let us know if it's going to happen or not. But you get this battle with K Shine, win or lose. What is your ambition for the rest of 2020? Because we damn near halfway. We're halfway I need, done I need with this. Champion, champion, champion of the year. You going for champion of the motherfucking year. Okay. Yeah. I like that. I like okay. that. I love oh. that. He's trying to get all the money this year, man. He's trying to get all. He's trying to get all the money this year. He is Cleveland, nigga. He it's like a con, it's a contract money. year. I need yeah. the max. I had, I had I had a plan, but I don't know if my plan gonna work. Like you mm. know what I'm saying. And, and I, you know what I'm saying? I, I, I was not going to say shit, but fuck it. It was going to be Sean. Whoever win that Ultimate Madness 2, mm. they got to go. You know what I'm saying? Because I got to show them who the fuck the champ is. You know what I'm saying? That match sells itself. Ass. Right? Mm -hmm. A nigga Come like on, shoot. Ab. Get well huh? soon, Ab, but yes, I need to see this. Keep ab, going. A nigga, like, a nigga like Suge and another nigga, and I think that is secure. You know what I'm saying? I'm Suge. Yeah. You get Clint wins with yeah. all these cats and you win the tournament, they are gonna have to talk about you. Okay, I yeah, got one yeah, more question. Yeah, yeah. I got one more question. Now, I've seen some people say this about you. Fines. Are you are you going a little too fast with your ambition as far as, you know, they're scared that you might be going through the Jack Boy phase where you're just Transitioning too fast, and then you hit man. that one dead end, and then that, and then that's it. Man, niggas can't. What do you niggas, say for people like that? Niggas can't let their fears be my fears, man. Mm. You know y'all might be scared of these niggas. You know what I'm saying? I ain't scared of these niggas. These regular niggas. Oh, you know what I'm saying? Y'all can't I make like y'all fears my fears, man. man. Oh. Oh. Attitude. This is, this, this is the winner. Okay. This is the winner like attitude. This I, I know you were watching the last dance in preparation for this tournament, right? Turn on your Jordan <laughs> mindset, your killer mindset. I love it, Fonz. This is a this is a great stretch for you. Um, looking forward to a real successful career for you too. Before we let you go, because we got we're gonna bring on 40 bars. You're aware of this tournament, and you were aware of the, your tournament as well. There's a lot of narratives of fans who they think are gonna upset people. Right, like the polls just have landslides where it really shouldn't be landslides because the talent is all really up to par. Who do you think is going to pull the biggest upset in Ultimate Madness Two? Obviously on paper because you probably believe everybody's talented enough to win on any given day. Um, I think the only the two biggest upsets can either be Holmesy or Ryder. Like, you know what I'm saying? Them that's a good upset, bro, because I got Saga winning the whole thing. I think that the Rapture, which is Saga, I, is going to come. The Rapture oh no, I, is you know coming. Saying? I ain't saying who I got winning, but them them, them two got to be the biggest upsets. If, the one, if them was the win, they'd fuck the whole tournament up. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, Riders, get Mike P wins, out of here. it's fucking up that whole bracket. Yeah. That whole fucking bracket. Mm. Fine, mm. Man. That's, or, 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 or or Reaper, if Re this would it be if Reaper beat Danny? That's the biggest upset. If you think Reaper so? Beat Danny, if Reaper beat Danny, that's the biggest upset. Okay. Facts. Oh no, I gotta go with that Ryder and Mike P, man. I think that'll be the biggest upset. So if Wait. Reaper beat beat Danny, I can Danny see. Not, I, I can see Reaper catching fire, and I can see. Danny being Danny, and depending who the judges are, because that, that also plays a factor, too. You know what I'm we saying? That also plays a factor. We don't know what could happen. Reaper could pull a stunt. He could do something incorporated with a prop, his face yeah, what mask, the whatever. What they, what they waiting to they waiting the day of to announce the judges, huh? I don't know. That's going to be interesting. <laughs> so I could see Reaper and Danny, you know what I mean? But the way Mike just performed, 
Like he went crazy, crazy, crazy all three rounds. You know what I mean? And Ryder, Ryder's good, but he gonna have to go insane. Ryder ain't rapped. Ryder so. ain't rapped all year, I don't think. But you know that's what what Mike, Mike is on a roll right now, coming fresh but, off of this. There's a lot of there's a lot of well rested pens in this tournament, so. Uh -oh, Rita, hold up, time out. Rita might be breaking news. Uh oh. She said, "I heard Fonz is a judge, y'all." Is you holding out on me, Fonz? <laughs> Rita, Rita started some shit. <laughs> Rita on some bullshit. <laughs> Rita on some bullshit. Rita, you started shit. <laughs> Wow, yeah. Oh, hey, bro, I had niggas so mad at me, bro. I had niggas so mad at me, bro. They know that all he's seeing. I be on my uncle Rod. I be on my uncle Rod. That ain't twenty five k. That ain't one k versus the bar. Yo, I gotta ask you, man. Did you have like a lot of homies placing like actual bets on you? Like my niggas ate, bro. My niggas <laughs> ate off of that shit, bro. That's what I'm talking about, man. Circulate that black dollar, man. Yo, I ain't gonna lie, my, my nigga hit me up. My nigga hit me up. He like, bro, I'm betting that you win the whole tournament. I'm like, nigga, don't do that. Nigga, bet on every battle. I'm gonna tell you how I feel before the battle. While my material looking, bet on per battle, bro. Oh, what's, <laughs> what's this? What's this point shaving going on? What's this point shaving happening here? What, what's going on? Yeah, I'm telling you, nigga, what it, I'm telling you, nigga, real. You know what I'm saying? Shit, I might, I might not be able to come up with shit. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. <laughs> nigga, don't bet this time. Bet against me, nigga. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> I was like, look, man, I got two down. This third might be shaky. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> if you're going to do a prop bet and you're going to bet on me to choke one round, it might be the third one. <laughs> you know what I'm Look at here. Right. I, like hey, I was betting on that shit, too. I was, I was eating up that shit, too. And the niggas. I think Don, Don was betting on me. After he got eliminated, he was betting on me. Don was sending me $60, nigga, go get a bottle on me. What? You know what I'm saying? That means yeah. Don came up there. You yeah, know Don, I mean? Don, Don was eating. Don's like, I give him 10%. I make 600 Yo, that's crazy. Why you put that accent? <laughs> uh, why you put that accent, Vlad? What, 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 what was that about? I just picture Don Marino sitting at home like a boss, you know, his, his shoes off, man, just eating oxtails and wilding, man. Like, you know, he's enjoying I his life right now. Too. Yeah, I seen the plates on, on on Twitter. I'm like, Don, that man. nigga, he, he that nigga that buy a bunch of food that don't eat it though. Like, we be out, that nigga buy a bunch of food. Like, you want some of the weed twice? Go ahead. You know what I'm saying? That shit just be sitting there. Like, Don, why you get all this shit for? I got to ask you, now that, you know, you've done the tournament and you've done all the traveling and you've been around everyone and now it's like you're one of the guys, you're in URLs in a circle. They have plans for fonts. Like, talk to me about the difference of the experience of like, yo, I know I'm nice, you know, Norms believes in me, you know, people believe in me, but I'm just not cracking through yet. So now it's like there's a full rollout for fonts coming. And we haven't even seen like the best of Fonz yet. Talk to me about mm. the difference in experiences now. Yeah, that's that's just getting the respect, you know what I'm saying? That for the for the talent, for the work, you know what I'm saying, for the effort, that shit right there, you know what I'm saying? That's a that's a great thing right there, man. You know what I'm saying? Because you always like, damn, these niggas spitting, you know what I'm saying? And I know I'm coming with some crazy shit, but now that you know what I'm saying, you got niggas like surf and niggas like rock, they hate your shit, they wilding out, you know what I'm saying? These are your peers, these niggas that you didn't watch, you know what I'm saying, for years. You know what I'm saying? Now these niggas, you side by side with these niggas, these your peers, so that shit feel great for real. Nah, man, that's dope. That's incredible. Uh, we, we're going to have 40 join us in five minutes, so we still got fonts for another few. So, uh, Scotty, Scotty408, shout out to him, he said, so is Fonz battling Shine or not? He want to get to the bottom of this shit. <laughs> Is you gonna battle Shine right now? Is it really gonna happen, or is it gonna just be a talking niggas. point? They gotta ask them niggas. You know what I'm saying? I called out who I wanted. You know what I'm saying? Shout out okay, to Rita. So you she did said, your part. Okay. Shout out That's to Rita. She said Fonz got to see Shug. That would be a fire matchup, actually. Fonz and Shug. Okay, Fonz. Okay, I'm gonna ask you a question. I got another one. What you gonna do if Shug try to? <laughs> Tap 
Look, that part of shit performance, so I ain't gonna sit here and say I'm gonna break the nigga fingers, none of that shit. You know what I'm saying? I, I'm gonna keep it real. He can, he can, Logos, you don't go in them motherfuckers. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> oh man, Logos, that would be a go in them motherfuckers. Yo, all of a sudden, Shook just like digging in. <laughs> <case. laughs> Logs, you don't go in them. You good, bro? Yo, Smack gonna look at you, you like yo. You, you don't go pop off. <laughs> He's like, I'm gonna, I'm gonna allow you to pop off. <laughs> go ahead. Fuck with Fonz. Any other questions? I mean, this your time. Yeah, this your time. Any questions from Fonz? Let us know now. Any questions? I mean, we was asking a lot. Uh, Fonz, I'm about to Shug. Shug gonna be slim. Shug been on his workout shit. That gonna be slim. Shug. Uh, (laughs) Look, Shug is slimming the fuck down. DC man wants to know: Will the apron return? Oh, Has no, to return man. against Suge. Apron for apron. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah. Versus Suge, the apron. Apron versus apron. <laughs> he gonna bring the top hat. Suge really, really want cooking in his apron, though. Oh! <laughs> Yo. Yikes. That is love- crazy. Next time, you gotta put a little blood on the apron. Get the little blood. Things going. I you thought he's coming in that bitch. With the powder, the bag of pot, flour and shit. You know what I'm, <laughs> I'm, I'm glad you didn't, bro. Coming at that wow. spatula with the whole shit, them little, yeah. uh, you know what I'm talking about? Them little things. Yeah, yeah. Coming at um, Yeah. Um, Rita wanted to know if you felt like you got cheated. Hell no, I got, I won 25K, how I got cheated. I feel that. And then somebody <laughs> else said, finds who you got winning Ultimate Man is two. Now, I can't tell y'all niggas, bro, because y'all, you know what I'm saying? They got them brackets out right now. Okay, so how about this? Let's, 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 let's do this. Let's do this. If you don't want to reveal your pick, who would you be most surprised to win it all? Like, whoa, I didn't see that coming. No, no. No, 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 Summer Madness. I'm here for it. <laughs> yeah, if none, none come through that bitch and win, niggas going to be fucked up, bro. It'd be a caffeine dream. But no, no, <laughs> bro. Don't act like y'all ain't see none of snap on motherfuckers though. Bro. What so all right, so what's your what the F summer madness match? None nuns on the right side. Who come out the left side to make it like, yo, I didn't see any of this coming. None <laughs> none versus Reaper Real. <laughs> yo, that be Chris Summer <laughs> Summer Madness A. <laughs> summer Madness A. <laughs> Reaper Real and None. From Long Island, New York. Reap around. Okay, okay, I got to read the valley. Time out. I ain't going to lie, nigga. None, none. <laughs> so okay, if there was, I wait, real quick, Cece, before you, before you ask that, if there was odds on it, like if it was plus 700 for that match to happen on Summer Madness, would you pay that? Would you go, Would you bet it? No. Uh, plus 1,000. Fuck it. <laughs> you know <what> <laughs> Why not? <laughs> <laughs> Go ahead, okay, I CC. More. I'm a risk okay, it. my bad. I read Rita's question wrong. But she asked, do you feel like anybody got robbed in Ultimate Madness? Not you. I think um Don nobody got robbed. I think Donna easily could win either way. I do feel like Big Hand, Big Hand probably, he probably mm. he probably caught the short end on that one. You know what I'm saying? And I think that's about it. Nah, that's yeah. a fact. Uh, someone okay. asked earlier, you know, with, with all the battle rappers, everybody's a killer and this and that. Everyone's so hardcore. But who is the funniest person that was in Ultimate Madness 1? Like, who was the funniest battle rapper out of everybody? And what's the funniest story you got to share with them? Well, you know what? It's kind of like, I don't got too many stories, though. You know what I'm saying? Because... Mm-hmm. When we out there, it's locked. It's locked in time. You know what I'm saying? We wasn't out there kicking it like mm-hmm. that. You had the person that you spar with, and the majority of the time, I spar with like uh, Don and Jake. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? And Bando. So then was my. You know what I'm saying? When I when I'm out there during the tournament, as long as we all progress and shit, I spar with Don, and I spar with Jay, and I spar with Bando. Sometimes Ace too. Right. You know what I'm saying? So we ain't really, you know what I'm saying? We weren't going to, it's a pandemic. So, you know, he's up in the room and shit. We weren't really like, you know what I'm saying? Clubbing and that. Yeah, for real. So it wasn't no, no crazy stories and none of that shit, for real. That's the stuff I appreciate. But the funniest that. motherfucker is Squeako. Squeako, the yeah, funniest man. motherfucker. 
<laughs> I can see that. Yeah, I can see Squeakle that. Squeako funny as shit. Squeako told me, when I choked against Ace, that nigga told me that morning when I was leaving at the hotel, like, I hope you choke. Because <laughs> <laughs> he choked against, uh, he choked against your honor. That nigga yeah. held that shit against everybody. <laughs> <laughs> then the following week, he comes back fire with 25K out of his pocket. Like, I didn't need this anyway. Like, man, what were you right. here for? What is happening? It made right, no right. sense. I think he might have just took Bando, took Bando a little light. Thought he could just skate by it and it's a wrap, yo. Yeah, Don funny as shit too though. You know what I'm saying? Oh, I got a question for you. So you know, we in an era of people joining battle rap groups. Mm-hmm. We, Are you ever going to consider joining a battle rap group? I would. But not right now. Not right now. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? I definitely would. On that, on that note, uh, we just got our admission here. So, Fonz, man, thank you so much for your time, brother. You know, we, we all support you on our side, and everybody from Absolutely. Ohio is rooting for Appreciate you. Appreciate y'all. Yeah, man, shout out to the ref for hooking everything up, man. And it's a great guy to have in your corner, yo. Salute to ref, man. Salute to him. All right, man. Fonz, thank you so much for joining us, brother. All right, man. Let's get our second guest of the hour in. I just admitted her. Yes, in. a female. Yeah, this broadcast, Let's everybody. Go. 40 bars is coming on. Let's Shit, this go. Broadcast. Here we go. All right, the most anticipated. Are we going to have to ask her to move over a little bit? Echo. Get it right. I say, sir. I hear an echo. Hold on, Forty. You can't be making fun of Surf with an echo in your background. It can't work that way. Forty, we need you to slide over a little bit. Hey. Oh, we can hear you now. Hey, beautiful. How are you? Hold on. Friends about to get the echo situated. Are you, are you what, watching the stream? You have to t- you have to put the volume on your stream if you're watching it down. Yeah, we just dubbed it. Hold on. That should be there. We go. Oh, hey. good. I just need you to turn your camera over a little bit. Hola. <laughs> yeah. What? We just need you to slide over just a little bit or turn the camera towards you. There you go. Perfect. A little, hey. a little more. That's good. That's good. Little, 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 little more. There you go. There we go. Now it's live in effect. Vlad, <laughs> please give our lovely guest her introduction. The highest viewed. Oh, man. Yo. Men lie, women lie, numbers don't. She is a numbers queen. She is one of the highest views ladies ever in female battle rap. She is holding down a region that doesn't get the props that it deserves. Uh, New England. She's been on every stage you can name, putting it down. Got the bodies under the belt. Flawless when it comes to the bars. And I believe she's Haitian, so that gets a little extra love from me. Ladies and oh, I love the Haitians. I'm a complimentary, so they made me. A, a, okay, okay. Well, sock by say, sock up fat. Ladies sock, and gentlemen, please welcome 40 Bars to Battle Rap Brunch, y'all. Salute to 40 Bars. Hey. Team 40's in here. I'm going wrapping my fingers for you, girl. Yes. Yeah. I've been. All right, great, man. I'm so excited to have this show on the road. Uh, 40, man, we, we were talking off air, and I, first I got to ask, you. we scheduled you, you say you can make it, you told me you couldn't, uh, <laughs> we're back here again, you can make it, we got you on Technologically Sound, right, you finally downloaded Zoom on your phone, what made you decide to say, you know what, I'm just going to do this show for my people to tune in, what, 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 was, what changed your mind last minute? Now make sure y'all follow Lake's um, graphics, because he's the reason why I'm on here, because I, I, I try to back out. I'm one of those people. I flake on interviews all the time. I'm one of those people. Oh, wow. Salute. What's the gentleman's name again? When, what name you want me to give them? No, no. Salute to Lake Graphics. Layland. His name's Layland. He, he's, he's super dope. He's also Lake Graphics on Instagram. Follow him. He does super dope shit. Go follow Lake this. Graphics. Shout him out. Yes. Thank you for making your friend do this, man. We appreciate he, he it. He definitely Thank you. <laughs> 
Forty got the old. Not because I don't fuck with y'all. Not because I don't fuck with y'all. But I'm just a flaker like that. Like you know, 40, I have a couple I, things going on. So not because I, I don't fuck with y'all. I know how it is. I tell my friends all the time. Yeah, yeah. I'll see you there. I'll see you there. I got no plans of getting out of my bed. All right. Okay. Right? <laughs> like, it ain't happening. Like if you, <laughs> if you don't know me and you don't love me, so that's good. Well, we're glad that you were able to make it though. Yes. Thank, Thank you, you so for having me. Time. Forty, you've been terrorizing the timeline all of last week, and all it takes sometimes is just a little bit of tweets, a little bit of spiciness, and then you're right back in the mix of everything. You've been you've been hashtagging damn surf. You've been dealing with all the ladies that've been trying to call you out. What 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 brought you back to bring back to social media and re, and, and get active again? Again, shout out Lake Graphics because uh, now nah, but all jokes. <laughs> Lake Graffers got to be the manager at this point. <laughs> Yo, he is. He's low key. He's he's one of them. I'm dead ass. Like he he be keeping me on point with my. I wouldn't interact on social media half the time if it wasn't for like people who fuck with me like Team Forty and shit like that. Cause I don't. I pop on and I pop off. Um, I get screenshots and all kind of shit about people talking crazy or whatever. So I think that's kind of um, what started it all up or whatever. Yeah. As far as you're talking about with coffee or with surf, surf was one of those things where it was a long time coming and coffee as of late has been, you know, kind of pressing me to battle or whatever. Yes, she has. Yes, she has. How do you feel about that? You know, coffee just came with a, I feel like for me, I've noticed that a lot of people got her beating KCJ um, and now she feel like she ready for a vet. And you're definitely one of the vets for the females. How do you feel about Coffee Brown? I feel like this. Coffee high. I feel like this. Um, I ain't going to go on a rant, but I'm a bit. This is no shade to coffee, but I'm a bit tired of people feeling as though I'm the bitch who has to break people in like I become a fucking gatekeeper or something like that. You know what mm. I'm saying? At the end of the day. I'm probably one of the bitches who have given most more new girl shots than anybody. I never tell people you got to get your name up. I never do Hollywood shit. I never do none of that. If your league wants to book me, they got my bag. I pull up. I never play Hollywood show with nobody, regardless of where I'm at in my career. If I'm doing good, if they love me, if I just fucked up and they hating me. So I feel like coffee's on her climb to the top. I get it. I, I respect her, her grind. Cause I'm gonna be honest. It's been a long time since I've had like some, competitive banter back and forth online and it hasn't gotten into no crazy shit. So I respect her for that. You know what I'm saying? Like she's keeping it strictly rap. I can respect that. We could do that all day. Um, as far as me necessarily being interested in battling her, if you want me to be hundred percent, I'm not interested in battling her. Not because it's, I'm not even going to have no rhymes and no reasons. At the end of the day, coffee's doing her thing. She's up and coming and stuff like that. That's cool. That's not the reason why I take people. I take people for money or prestige. If it don't make dollars, mm. it don't make sense. Mm. So either I'm taking you because your name's bigger than mine's and the people feel as though I'm going to level up by beating you, or I'm going to take you because I've decided, okay, nah, this bag is handsome enough for me to make it attractive. As far as coffee with the situation, um, if I beat coffee, they're going to say I was supposed to do that. If coffee beats me, then all of a sudden there's questions about me being unseated as the queen. Like, I don't got time for that shit. So we'll take the battle when it's supposed to. I never told her I wouldn't, but it's just like, am I pressed to do it? Am I like, oh my God, I'm about to, yeah, I got to battle coffee. No, I don't give a fuck. I've defended the throne plenty of times. I've arguably fucking lost my seat and got it back. Like, I don't, I'm not pressed to battle anyone who's not going to make me prestige. And with all due respect, I'm not going to go nowhere different battling coffee and killing her. They're going to say, 40, you were supposed to do that. Then what? You know, That's uh true. Uh, the 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 rookies versus vets theme card of Queen of the Ring. You headlined it against Cheddar, and you know you. Hold have on, sir, sir. I created that card. Mm. Make no mistake. Mm -hmm. You see, I said Team Forty presents. I did that card. I created it to give the girls a good look because that's what I'm all for. So it wasn't just I was a part of it, not trying to be funny. I created that card. I picked out each battle. I handpicked each battle myself. So Come on, 40. Come they can on. Just try to play me. These bitches make claims to be the queen because they want a certain amount of battles or whatever. They get a certain amount of likes on their pictures, but they're not doing anything to move the culture forward. They're not uplifting their peers. They're not doing none of this shit. So that, that's why it's not the same. I didn't mean to cut you off, but no, it's, it's, it's all good. I'm, 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 I'm glad you, you put the respect on it that you needed to. But I say that because it's like you are one of the greatest female battle rappers. Like you are the end game for a lot of these girls. So like, how do they climb the ranks to get a 40 bars and official a jazz at E-Heart? Like it almost seems impossible at some point, right? Like it's it, not it, impossible because it wasn't impossible for me to do it. I had a bottle, Star Smiles, Norma Bates, um, Tori Doe. Like it's work that you have to put in. 
You know what I'm saying? And it's just, it's one of those things. I mean, unfortunately, some of these newer girls are coming into battle rap where a lot of the top tiers have already battled themselves. Battle rap is not as attractive as it used to be because niggas are tired. We've been doing it for years. So it's up to them to build their own brands and make themselves that kind of star power. It's nobody else's responsibility but your own to make yourself you know, people want to battle you, whether it's from your body of work, whether or not it's from you're the biggest troll in battle rap or whatever the fuck the case may be. It's your responsibility to make people want to battle you, not the leagues, not the fans. It's the artist's responsibility. Facts. Boy, you've got this chat going crazy, but also most of the chat is saying they could only see half of you. So we're just going to ask you to slide over just a little bit. There you yeah. go. All right. Yes. You if you stay right there. Oh, the, the the chat's going to ham now, all right? We can't get the chat to stop blinking, Forty. This is going crazy right about now. Everybody got the googly eyes up, so salute, Forty. See, now, Forty! Now everybody's happy now. You know what I, mean? <laughs> I got to ask you. We know what happened at the Summer Impact. You seen that? Boom. Then you got Surf sitting across from you doing his interview thing. He's got Jay Black's jacket on. He's giving you the rundown. You better not choke this, that, and the third when the, when that level comes. And you deliver a flawless performance versus Miss Hustle. Consensus, and I got, I got you winning. winning. I got you winning also. I got you Looking winning. Looking very good in the battle also, might I say. And then we got Surf, who just headlined No Max versus Loaded Love. Beloved. We saw how that <laughs> battle turned out. Did you watch the battle with the grin on your face? Did you Did feel I? vindicated? Talk to us about your Saturday afternoon watching Gnome X. <laughs> I'm, I think I think Gnome I think Gnome X might have been the first um, battle I've ever watched, the first event I've ever watched in its entirety online. Mm. Um, damn, and I, I don't even I think I missed like the first two battles. So I can't even say that. I think I came on Mike P was battling. So you missed one battle probably. All right. Okay, so I missed the first battle. Okay, so I see Mike P and Saga, <laughs> but um. <laughs> <laughs> ha, 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 ha. Oh, <laughs> is there something between you and Saga? Saga, get up! <laughs> Saga, get up! Please! Oh. But yeah. Um, yeah, so me watching that battle was... It was exciting. I mean, you know, the funny thing is I'm not like a super hater or nothing like that, but I'm a clown just like everybody else. So if a motherfucker was talking crazy to me one day, and they're eating pie the next day or crow the next day, whatever you guys want to call it, then yeah, I'm, I was dying. Every time he stopped, it was, and I was like, ha, ha, ha. I Trick wish he could have heard me. Trick dice. I wish he could have fucking heard me. Like, I swear to God, I was like, ha, ha. Like, yeah, yeah. Every choke that he made, every choke that he did was me praying on his motherfucking downfall. <laughs> <laughs> <That's the end. laughs> the fuck? <laughs> every time <laughs> every time he had a memory lapse, that was me Good praying guys. for it. <laughs> I mean, like let me ask you, like when when you was sitting across from Surf and he said that where he was like, I can't take 40 serious because she always be choking. How did that make you feel? Because I already special. knew you came. Like, let me tell you this. I already knew you came into the 40 battle life. I mean, not the Miss Hustle battle, like, okay, I got to redeem myself. Mm -hmm. So I know you did not need surf to make you feel that way. But how did it make you feel that a peer of yours was like, I can't even take her serious? It makes me super aggravated because on some real shit, like I I'm like a fan of surfs. Like I've never I've never said I wasn't. I've always like I, I think he's talented. You know what I'm saying? Do I think that he is. He's the pot calling the kettle black. Yeah, like, bro, like, your fucking choke percentages is super higher than mine, dog. Like, let's really talk that shit. I get mm -hmm. it. I was on uh, the battles where I guess deemed more important or whatever the case may be, jazz and then summer impact. So I get it. You know what I mean? I never, the difference with me and Surf is, He's not a man when he fucks up. Like, I can't respect that. There's never been any time there's, like, no rhyme or reason. Like, you fuck up, you, you stand on your square. He don't do that. He's blaming the motherfucking echoes and octaves and all kind of stupid shit that's going on in the fucking building. Sir, you weren't prepared. You fucking choked. I knew that the night before when you didn't come to the motherfucking face-off. You wasn't ready, sir. You choked. So don't blame it on the motherfucking echoes a day later. Blame it on the fact that you were ill-prepared. You know what I'm saying? So it's, yeah, like, fuck out of here. So, yeah, I be feeling a way about him always having something to say about my performance. Like, he's fucking flawless. Like, he gets up there and, and doesn't choke or, like, 
You know what I mean? He's never jerseyed the fuck out of a battle or some crazy shit. Difference with me and him and is... I, yeah. And I feel like that's the thing. It's like, you know, if it was like like for Saga, for instance, this is our first time seeing him do something this bad. It's like, okay, I could give him a little leeway. But with Saga, it's like, hilarious. we've seen this kind of a little bit in the past. You know, we've seen you jersey, we've seen you choked all the other stuff. Like, how does it make, do you guys, as a female battle rapper, do you feel like the guys are a little bit harder on y'all compared to Yeah, they are. Yeah, they are. They are. And people are a lot more lenient with the guys, their fucking material, their reaches, all kind of shit. If I said, holla, I'll peen your head to the fucking wall, they would have dragged me from the window to the fucking wall. (laughs) I said this book about barking, talk to you like Scooby-Doo. You know what these motherfuckers said to me? Scooby-Doo's not a bulldog. Bitch, who said he was? You understand what I'm saying? But you guys let somebody add a whole nother syllable in between a word that's supposed to be a word split. Like, well, how come we he, niggas don't have to follow no rules? Oh, that's how I feel. Like they the like them to use the whole it. Egypt scheme versus Tayrock. Nobody say nothing about that. It's a lot like of stuff that's women, going on. I feel like the women see that, but men, I don't know. I'm not going to say all of them, but I do see a lot of the men being like, oh, that shit's fire. But if a woman tries to do the same thing, they'd be like, oh, man, that shit corny. That's a reach. These bitches ain't got bars. It's like, wait a minute. Your favorite battle rapper be doing the same shit. Your favorite battle rapper's taking battles from your favorite female battle rapper. Let's start there. Taking bars from there. Let's start there. And and people make it seem as though men are the only people who are capable of putting together sentences or words. Like, it's like, are you kidding me? We're not having a weightlifting contest or some shit like that. What the fuck you mean? Like, why is it in impossible for me to write some clever bars last i checked women have the sharpest tongue so why 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 are not mm. we show do we show mm. motherfucking do so this is my question like i heard debo i've heard other people talk about it and they call tyrock and they say he has the queen of the ring versus the guys from the url now how do you feel as far as that potentially being something planned before even before the answers that she has plenty of guys on her resumes that she's made look crazy already. So, come on, let's talk about it. Let's talk about it. <laughs> Thank you. Let's talk about it. Terrence. <laughs> Ernesto. <laughs> PC. QP. Got them in the closet somewhere. Arguably, they <laughs> <Got hold on. laughs> Forty let us out. <laughs> oh my god! One of the one dudes that I did that I did that got crazy with me. And this motherfucker tweets this battle like every fucking day. Is LL Cool G. So y'all make sure y'all fuck with him because he's one of the few dudes I wasn't able to kill. So shout out to him, yo. Salute Shut to LL Cool G. This motherfucker yeah. tweets that battle every day. <laughs> Forty just sits back and smokes the long joints while they just rattling away in a dungeon. <laughs> she got the nineteen twenty joints. <laughs> yeah, my friend has like these little smoke cute accessories and stuff like that. So oh, like you know, right. shout out her business of... while we're here, man. Support, yeah, Ooh, support let's business. Go. businesses and stuff let's like go. that. Smoke cute accessories and all that, you know. Hey, shout out smoke cute accessories, man. If it's on IG, whatever, Google it. Let them know LTBR sent you, all right? No, let them know. Let's go. Get y'all a promo code or something, a coupon. Hello. Or something. 40, <laughs> before, we, before we dive into some uh, some more personal questions and, and questions from the chat, you made history this month, and we got to really uh, shout you out for it. Um, have top five of the top ten battles of Queen of the Ring, and, you know, you're in an elite class with people like Disaster, Arsenal, uh, that kind of have shared this accolade with you. And I've been in some of your battles live. Like, you have a cult following. Like, people come with 40 bars jackets, 40 bar sweaters with merch. They're, like, mesmerized. And it's that like they one made of, themselves. Like, they didn't 40. already made it. Like, it's crazy. Like, Team 40 is a real thing. Like, and they, they come deep all the time for you. So, like, my thing is branding. How did you build this brand to become this way? And what tips could you share to any of the up-and-coming uh Battlers, so you're like, this is what you got to do to build a brand and an audience that will be loyal with you throughout everything that you do in your career. I don't want to disappoint y'all, but my game is sold and not told. Y'all need to hit up 2020 Consulting if you need any of that information because no. ah, I got you for that. But in general, um, I just, I, my, my engagement and my interactions with my supporters is way different than I've noticed my peers. You know what I mean? I've seen some of them act too cute to take a picture with people who done traveled hours and shit to go see them. I done mm. see motherfuckers leave people on street corners. I, you know, I, I done see some situations, man. It's like, too. 
a situation where a, 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 a supporter came from, like, I'm not even going to say the country because everybody's going to know what the fuck they are. They came from the Middle East, okay, mm. to come see a battle rapper. And the battle rapper left them. All right. And I'm not saying you owe anybody anything, but to me, I have a little bit more a sense of responsibility. Like, damn, you came all the way to fuck over here to see me. Like, this was going on. Like, okay, we're going to do this. Come on. Do this and do this. You know what I'm saying? And I think that's a big reason of why my supporters fuck with me the way they do. Because some of these girls have been out longer than me. You know what I'm saying? And people have known them um, longer than they've known me. But um, I feel like my support system is stronger because I appreciate my support system more than a lot of the other girls do. I can't say everybody else, but... I appreciate them. They're not aggy to me. It's not a problem. Like, it's, you want me to call your people, any birthday shout outs, whatever the fuck, like, that's what we're doing because why not? I wouldn't be, all these views and these accolades that you guys speak of, I wouldn't have them. I can't watch my battles that many times by myself. You know <laughs> that's a real thing. And I feel like, you know, sometimes, you know, when we see battle rappers, I don't really see the girls saying it as much as the guys. But they kind of just be like, you know, it's kind of like the attitude of fuck the fans. Like, fuck what they talking about. And it's like, you know, y'all don't understand how much it costs and how much effort we put into coming and flying into a whole different state, a whole different city to come watch you battle and have to stand in line for damn near two to three hours to get inside the battle. And we've already we paid 80 plus dollars to get buy the ticket and none. now we have to wait for you mm. to battle it's like yo you can't just have that attitude like man fuck y'all no i and on, on your side i see that but it's like it's like a catch-22 because a lot of fans feel as though because they've done that that we owe them something i don't technically owe you anything because you wouldn't have that same energy if you was going to see drake you just feel as though, not you personally, but you feel as though because I'm more accessible on the internet or on Facebook or YouTube or you're seeing me mingling with my peers a lot more than you would your favorite celebrity that you can talk to me in your kind of way or I owe you something. That's what right. I'm saying. You understand what I'm saying? That's I do. Anything I do is because I genuinely feel appreciative of, like you said, all that hard work people did put in to come see me. But on the flip side, I've also had people who are belligerent and feel as though I, I don't owe you shit. You pay to come see a show, me and which several of other people are in the show. Once I performed my show and left, I don't owe you shit. Anything else is extra. And that's not to be nasty. That's just a business transaction. You paid for a show. You didn't pay for a handshake, a hug, the 40 bars, can I talk to you? Can I put my your sweaty ass cheek against mine and take this picture and shit like that? Nah, you didn't, you didn't pay for that. I'm doing that out the kindness of my heart because I fuck with you or I don't. So a lot of fans in battle rap, unfortunately, they have this entitled attitude. And I think a lot of it's because we interact in these Facebook groups and stuff like that. So we're a lot more accessible than other people. So they feel as though they could talk to you in any kind of way. They feel as though that they know you. Yeah. Like, you know what I mean? So it's, yeah. it's a bit. It's yeah, a bit. I feel what you're saying. Because I feel like, you know, I feel like you, like my mother always told me, you get more with honey. You know what I'm saying? So if you be sweet and you be nice to people, you get more from those people. But you coming into, you know, oh, you a bitch and you suck, you trash, then you can't be bad when the person you say you you was trash don't want to take a picture with you. <laughs> they will do that. They will troll you on Facebook and think, I have yeah. screenshots of people on my phone. And I'm like, wait, I didn't I was arguing with you last week on the page. See you the fuck later. You know what I'm saying? Right. And it's, like, it's just like, not a, a back and forth about battle rap. Like, these motherfuckers are going deep in. Like, you want to argue about an angle someone took against me in a battle. Or you want to go through my pictures. And, like, I'm not doing that with whatever. So sometimes sometimes it's like, if you're too nice, it makes it gives people a sense of entitlement because, you know, you're too accessible. And that's the first thing they teach you. Don't be too accessible. But right. if you're not, you come off as being Hollywood. So you got to find a balance. Yeah. You know what I mean? Right. Mm -hmm. to, to me having a cult following in battle rap is like one of the greatest things you can have like hollow to don he could clearly lose a battle 3-0 but everyone at lol mafia would be like hollow still the greatest we don't care you'll be back bro you know what i'm saying like they'll support you to the end as long as you rock with them now we know that you got team 40 is your support in battle rap knowing off battle rap how real life can get how having kids can get having to prepare bars and all that material who's like some of the your support systems like off the you know what I'm saying out of the ring in, in life like that helps you get through battle to battle team 40. everyday life team 40. team 40 team 40 that's who I spar with that's who gets me dressed that's who calls me and reminds me that I need to practice my bars that's who doesn't let me feel sorry for myself when I feel like my material is not good enough that's who tells me that bar is not good enough you need to step it up that's who says hey you said something similar in another round you might want to change that up those mm. people so, yeah. 
That's a fact. That sounds super like trivial or whatever, but it's, it's facts. You know what I mean? No, nah, super facts. And, 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 uh, go ahead, friends. And I was gonna say, you know, your, your supporters keeping you that inspired. You've been through the game, and you know this game has a lot of politics, a lot of ups and downs, a lot of bullshit that happens. How do you still stay motivated and inspired to be, you know, the elite name that you are? Because obviously sometimes everybody wants to just walk away from this eventually, but it never seems like you lost, you lost love for this. Like you're, when you step into it, you get active. Like it looks like you fell in love with it all over again. How do you, how do you keep that? Um, I must make it look good. <clears throat> I'm not going to front because I, I've definitely fallen. Like I've lost a lot of passion for bad rap over the years. You know what I mean? Just different mm -hmm. sometimes. You, the politics of it all, the fucking, the fans are, they can be draining. The whole situation can be exceptionally draining. If you're not like a mentally strong person, battle rap will break you. Mm. You know what I mean? Not just your opponent saying shit to you, but then you're getting and you're reading hundreds and hundreds of comments and people are inboxing you and emailing you. And then like, it's just a whole different situation. Whereas, you know, um, it, it becomes, it, it doesn't, it's not always as fun. Like when I first started battling, it was fun because I was watching people do it. I'm like, well, I could fucking do that. And then I start doing it. Okay, like people are fucking with me. Then it's now it's a job. It's no longer something that I know I could fuck with or dibble and dabble at. It's become work now. It's something mm -hmm. like, hey, you have to show up. This is what's expected of you. You get paid for this. And when you're done, it's over. It's no longer like, oh, this is, you know, when your passion becomes your job, it's, you know, it can be easy. It, it gets, it gets ugly sometimes. You know what I mean? And I don't, each battle brings something different out of me. You know what I mean? I had lost love. Um, not the love for battle rap, but I lost my passion to necessarily want to battle for a while. And then I got the two on two situation and um, I was excited about that. Never did URL before. Um, even halfway through that, I got frustrated. Like, this is why I don't want to fuck with battle rap because me and my, you know, me and my teammate were having such a hard time meshing, getting our material together and shit like that. Um, then after some impact, since I bombed on that, it's again, I'm like, oh, I'm staying the fuck away from <laughs> some impact not because i fucked up because people are acting like i've never done anything great before now you know what i mean so oh, yeah. that's how it is yeah so that'll make you like kind of like not a pity party but it's kind of like all right well fuck y'all then like it's not that serious and then the hustle opportunity was presented so it's like okay fuck it if i'm gonna keep it cool for a little bit and not like retire nothing but if i'm just gonna take a little break at least i'd like to leave off on a, a good note. Good. On a high note yeah yeah so and you sure did you Thank showed you. it because I know a lot of people coming into that battle, they was just like, Well, why would y'all get 40 bars this opportunity after what she just did? And there's no way she could bounce back, but you proved everybody wrong. So I would definitely say to you, woman to woman, I'm proud of you for that one. Thank I know you. I tweeted you, I don't know if you ever seen it, but <laughs> I don't think here why I got the chance that I was proud of you because you proved to everybody that you know what, I'm human, I fuck up. You know what I'm saying? Right. But you know what? That don't make me, that that mistake doesn't define me as who I am, especially in this culture. And sometimes as fans, that one mistake you make defines your legacy. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because yeah, they're not real. You had to remind everybody who the fuck 40 bars was. And I'm so yeah. happy you did. Thank you. <laughs> yeah, I'm so happy you did. Because Cece, in our real lives, like if we mess up or something, then, you know, maybe our family knows about it, maybe a close friend, but it's not going viral. I couldn't imagine like being on a live pay-per-view, things go left, and then you know what's coming after that and everything. Like, I, I probably want to run away from the world. You know how, how many times you know, I'm How do you deal there? with that? And yo, give the internet makes people super <laughs> tough, yo. People barely know how to fucking tweet will create accounts to talk shit to you, I promise you. <laughs> oh, we get the X shows all the time, we know. I, yo, this shit is crazy. I'm like, damn, is this somebody's grandfather? Like, do you know what you're saying? <laughs> like, yeah, I put my money on you, why? <laughs> Why? <laughs> you, so I, I, the first 48 hours is like, ah, right, the memes are gonna hit. Like, put your Jordan crying face on me, get it over with. But then a week later, it's like, all right, who's this burner account? Who's this person without an icon? Yo, you just gotta pray something else happens in battle rap and <laughs> the shit just comes you. Okay, what happened after Devil Impact that got me off of that got it away from that? Oh Mook, man, Mook, Mook, Mook and uh, Cow in battle that night. The hard red Amazara. No, no, that it was something else that happened because the big it, was, fight. It, it was something. Was it the fight? Yeah, something big fight. happened. Mook the night Briz. of your situation. Mook and Briz then, happened a month a month later, so that probably. 
No, 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 no. Not after my double my summer impact battle. Something else happened oh. in battle rap. And um girl, close the door, you let my air out. Um Black people don't play about that AC air, yo. Mm-mm. She's on my home <laughs> on my balcony. She's trying to tell me what happened. I'm like, girl, my air, let my air out. Get out of here. Close that damn door. <laughs> <laughs> he told him I, <laughs> I already got me so many BTUs in this motherfucker. <laughs> Thank you. And then you get it cool and it gets hot, then you gotta all the time you gotta get cool all over again. Like no. <laughs> you got anything on this electricity? Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. And and the hustle battle, what made it so dope is that like you and hustle are both elite and it's a small class you guys is just like we wanna see the elites go against each other. You know, before we take some questions from the chat, because everybody's really excited to talk to you, there's an yes, elite. Are, there, there's an elite match that's still brewing in battle rap that I feel like could be a mega match for the ladies. Um, and there's a lot of back and forth between Jazz and rapper and Misfit. It may happen, it may not happen. Forty, in your eyes, in your perspective, if the battle was to go down, how would you perceive it happening? Like, how would you break it down to us? Huh? I've never wanted to see that. You've never wanted really? to see it. No. Wow. And- there's a lot of people that want to see it. There's a demand for it. Misfit's been um, my number one. Like, Misfit's probably one of my favorite female battle rappers forever. I've all, I love Misfit to death. So it's nothing to do with that. And Jazz, the bitch who keeps beating me, it's fire too. <laughs> so it has nothing to do with that. It's, I guess it's like, I, I guess I just never was interested in seeing that, that, that clash. Like, I don't really think that matchup makes a lot of sense to me. I, I think I want to see like Misfit and Couture more or something. You know what I mean? Like, I don't think I want to see like Misfit and Jazz. I'd want to see like Couture with both of them versus them versus each other, if that makes sense. That's just me. Mm-hmm. Even That's after a- the fact that Misfit tried to kind of air out her hello, hello, Misfit. That, that, that shit was corny as shit. Ooh. That was corny. That whole cop thing. That was corny. Yeah, right. the cop thing. Misfit that she's the operator, which Misfit. makes her a cop. Misfit's funny as fuck. She's better than that. That was a little corny, in my opinion. Because after watching, I ain't gonna hold you up. After watching that video, I was like, wait a minute, are operators cops too? <laughs> the operators and not cops <laughs> in battle rap, <laughs> but in battle rap, I think in battle rap, with it. I was like, yes, I mean, I don't, yes, kind of just studied her. She just said, I answer phones and you fix them. She kind of just like, <laughs> <laughs> see, that's oh, the man. thing with Misfit. It's like, yo, I don't know, if Misfit, <laughs> I don't know, if Misfit felt, felt like she was never gonna have a battle with Jazz, so she just said, fuck it, I'm gonna air it out, but now it's. Jazz come back talking about, well, I would battle Misfit if I get the bag and it makes sense. So if you do battle Jazz, that angle, you gave her so much time to rebuttal that shit. So that angle going to be diluted. It's, that's, that's, a, that's a misconception in battle rap. Mm. Angles are never diluted. First of all, okay. you have to decide if your yeah. opponent is even going to entertain it to try to rebuttal it. You know what I'm saying? Sometimes you can still really go with that angle. And the fact that she's planted the seed could make her angle even stronger if her bars are tight around it because now people have already had that small seed planted. Okay. So it doesn't Let's necessarily go. always wash things out. Sometimes it actually lays the groundwork for a stronger angle when you're performing it. You know what I mean? Oh, okay. Mm-hmm. I hear you. I hear you. <laughs> yeah. Sometimes the it's the formula like, right about now, right? I, I, I love it. I ain't too many more jewels, man. I ain't giving out too many more jewels after this. <laughs> All right, let's get to the people. I'm not like, me jewels. I'm collecting them. <laughs> I take those jewels and put on put on the crown. Uh, let's take this get now. The- so, Forty, what's your writing process? Right, <laughs> <laughs> terrible. Do you write with your left hand yeah. or your right? I write with my feet. <laughs> oh, <laughs> this is gonna be a Forty's only fan of her writing balls with her feet. I'm like, Girl, you <laughs> You an OnlyFans. What? I need Girl, PC over I'm that. Like, oh, I've been doing research. I've been so doing research. And men are paying for feet pain. Y'all want to see me write chat. bars with my feet? Get it together. <laughs> with my feet. So, nah, right, but I just, um, my writing process is uh, light research. And then whether that's, you know, watching your battles, if I'm not that familiar with my opponent and it's not like some kind of grudge match or something. Um, a brainstorm. I write my raps like I write English papers. I brainstorm ideas. I do the compare and the contrast. Sometimes I decide what I'm gonna do here. How many times I'm gonna talk about this? If it's repetitive, mm-hmm. you know what I mean. This is stronger for this. I write. Um, I write in pieces, and I typically 
tend to put them together and put my transitions like that. That way I don't waste the bar. I feel like when you write all the way through, you kind of fill gaps and you have more room for filler. I have, my fillage percent is probably under 5%. Mm. You know what I mean? Because I write like that. But it also takes me a lot longer to write because I write like that. So it takes me a really long time to write. I don't come up with these things quickly. I'm not someone who would sit there and write a battle in a day or two. I've never claimed to be like that. It takes me a lot to write. So um, I guess to sum it up, uh, yeah. No, oh, that's dope, Ben. And any more, they're going to have to pay. What's the consulting company 2020 again? Consulting. We help execute the perfect vision. Hello. All right. <laughs> All right. <laughs> All right. Let's, okay. let's, uh, let's throw it to the chat. God damn. The, the chat, the oh, chat, man. the chat's been patiently waiting. Uh, one question was uh, from the chat. They asked, HBY asked, what's the fate? What is your favorite round you've written? That's a good question. Salute to the round I've written. Like, which one can you remember off well, Look, that's what I'm thinking. First of all, let me remember some of my rounds. Let me start there. I think I I feel like it's around in my normal battle. I always I go to that. Too. I feel like I feel like it's either my second or my third. I want to say my second versus normal. Is that when my Manhattan scheme was in? I think my second. No, that was third. It's I think third. it was my third That's verse third. versus Norma Bates. Yeah. I think that was like my. I like I I thought that fucking Manhattan shit was gonna make me a fucking superstar. <laughs> I thought that bar was like the best thing since sliced bread dough. So yeah, um, my third round versus Norma Bates. Fine. Okay. Salute to okay. Team Forty helping in real life, yeah. I'm telling you, <laughs> listen, I'll be nothing, nothing. <laughs> Another question I've seen. We're still taking questions. Throw them out there. Another question I've seen is: aside from battle rap, what's one of your favorite hobbies? I'm a super DIYer, do-it-yourselfer. So. Oh. I'm really big on crafts and like I make anything like all kind of stuff. I'm really big on like crafts and stuff. So when you go to IKEA, you look forward to putting everything together yourself. See, IKEA is no, not so much. I'm more like of a Hobby Lobby or like a Joanne's fabric, like that kind of stuff. Oh. Like Joanne, yes. yeah, like make a fucking ottoman out of a fucking tire, like that kind of shit. IKEA is just like putting oh, together God. Swedish furniture. It's not really like. Yes, oh, I feel you, I, Joanne's. Or Michael's, Michael's that's where Jillian. you can go and really yeah. put everything together. Ikea, they just... It, it's just furniture you're putting together. Level. Yeah, like I yeah. I get something from Ikea then go to like Joanne's or something and be like, okay, I want to add this. Let me add an LED strip on this or something like that. Like that's the type of shit that I'm on. Like, oh, I want this. Or I'll see something. I'm like, okay, I don't want to pay for that. Like I'm going to make it because... Right. My see, favorite. Ikea give you all of the stuff. Yeah. But Joanne's and Michael's, you can get creative. Yeah, you can craft it. Like, anything. yeah, this is what I want, but I want to do it with this and this and the third. Yep. So, I can so you can make it more personal. Box service, and they picked out the meat for you, the this or that, but I mean, the other ones, it's like you're going shopping on your own, putting it together. Ikea is only limited to furniture, and Joanne's and Michael's, they're a craft store for anything. So if I want to go make baskets, or if I want to go make t-shirts, if I want to go do anything, I could do all that kind of stuff in there. I want a scrapbook, if I want to fucking make um, as in bases. scrapbook? Yeah, I'm, big, I'm into stuff like that. So <laughs> what is like, I'm gonna get a pound of weed, Let's sit in go. the house, and just make stuff. Uh, you know, Vlad, you, you mentioned that somebody asked who. What's your favorite yeah, weed strand? Sour Diesel. Oh, I'm a classic. classic, old, regular, very classic Sour Diesel. My like, that's good with what works, man. There's so many new ones out now, so many names, and I don't like. I don't like, even like this playing is the remix of the remix. Man. Your mother's uncle's chocolate. Come on, we talking about everything. <laughs> Number eighty-three. That's it was. Shout out to Rita. Um, the question cut off though. If not, if not surf, which male would you want to battle? I think she asked. The yeah, question cut off. That's what I see. Yeah. yeah. Which guy would you want to battle if not surf? Sir. Sir. <laughs> That's what I'm saying. That's what I'm saying. Because he wants, you know, what? Rajan, really Mr. Talking. Cox. John John. Oh, oh John Rajan. John. Nah, Rajan. Oh, Mr. Rajan. Cox. Rajan. However, you want to address him. Pause. You know what I mean? Because <laughs> I was about to say, you know, so, Pause. Was Pause. Really, Pause. he was really saying some shit. And, and even though, yes, we all, even if I'm a fan and I love you, I, I can understand that, yeah, you did not have the best showing. 
I was just like, well, damn, coming from you? I couldn't believe it. Wait a minute. Hold on, sir. I wish I'd have put some fucking money up. I swear to God. I oh, couldn't no, believe it. Sir. Now, if it was Hitman, that's different. You know first, what I'm saying? If it was first beloved, that's different. But I was like, wait a minute. And everybody ran with it. They were like, yeah, 40 bars. I'm like, what? what? Wait, wait, wait. He's funnier than I am, so it's one of those things. Wait. <laughs> he had them laughing in the face off. It's no, cool. not CC versus Surf. You know, I ain't got no bars, but I'll cut you out. I'll pin you something. It was a worry. cussing match. I'll cut you something <laughs> out. I'll, I'll, I'll pin you something. I'll send you some bars. I'll send you some bars through. <laughs> <laughs> you might have to send me some bars for you. I ain't got no bars, but I'll cut you the fuck out. <laughs> no, that's great. Okay. That's what we need to ask about me. I made motherfuckers feel some type of way after I get done. <laughs> okay. <laughs> but I love you, sir. Right? You know, I'm just saying. Coming on Patreon, man, question. and cuss out, yo. CC, <laughs> no. y'all go, yeah, y'all gonna get cussed out about CC. <laughs> oh, I, I, I like this one. Forty. What's your last home cooked meal or a meal that you've been craving? Mm. I cook a couple times a week, so something someone cooked for me, or because I cook. Oh. Way. We don't want to know what you cooking, girl. I made my son um shrimp and rice last night. I don't know if that counts. Like, does it have to be like a whole bunch of stuff? He nah, ate salad, what, he had whatever, whatever you make, just let us know. What you cooking? It's on the menu. Yeah, we just had teriyaki shrimp and rice. And salad. Oh, mm -hmm. okay. He said teriyaki though, not no regular shrimp with some salt and pepper. She no. said teriyaki. No, I really can cook. I can cook as good as I can rap. Like, I really can cook. How do you well, feel about cooking with? You want to cook for you. How do you feel about cooking with edible butter, oils, or sauces? Ooh. I've done it limit, look, I've, I've only on, done Rita. limited times, but I would love to like even more. Like a friend next door, mind used to always have butters and stuff like that. So I've cooked with butters a couple of times, but I Come definitely. On, Rita. Do it more. Now you know what I have never cooked it myself, but I've had whether it's cookies. Or on on course dinners with some <laughs> with some weed in it, CBD or whatever the fuck they call it. That shit is amazing. That 40, shit is fucking amazing. Forty, have you ever overdosed on an edible? Wow. Just like, just get me the fuck out of here now, because <laughs> I'm been there. I just close my eyes and go to sleep. I have happens. the tolerance of ten men. Like I. Mm -mm. I had edibles and they'll make me like giggly and stuff like that but it never like how people be like yo I was too high I can't move like what I wish I could feel like that like I don't I don't get like that I think everybody's just different too like your body makeup will react to things differently you know what I'm saying? I'll be so. laughing and giggly and stuff like that but they never like put me out you know what I mean like they never like uh, I've been there where it's like yeah it's gotta stop <laughs> like this is like this gotta stop right now and all you can do is just like close your eyes and hope to sleep but you've got so much energy in your body. You literally feel like you're <laughs> hovering off the bed. Like, yo. Like your astral yeah, like, or something. It's just too much going on. And it's like, you just, you want to do everything and nothing at once. Like, that's what it feels like. Like, it's, it's almost paralyzing, yo. It's crazy. Watching yourself. <laughs> All right, talk to us, chat. What else y'all got for 40? I see y'all getting crazy. Somebody said, I'll cook for you, 40. Um, somebody said, yeah. Somebody said you look just as sexy without makeup on. They're shooting their shots in here. They're shooting their they're shooting their shots in here. Throw your props to shoot your shot, man. Throw your props. Come on, fellas, shoot your motherfucking shot. Don't be scared. Forty, what would you like for that next special person to cook for you? I like a lot of red meat. So I like steak a lot. I like um if you can make like a good black and like salmon or whatever, you can make like a good piece of fish. That's a win for me. Oh, a black and salmon with some lemon and that's like that thing. garlic butter. Some grilled asparagus. Like mm -hmm. that's my type of party. If you can, <clears throat> come on. If you can come on, make a Take piece note. of salmon, then that says like can't be dried out. I don't want any of that nasty white stuff around the side that you baked it. Like you got to know how to. <laughs> so, yeah. That's a struggle okay. salmon. Thank you. <laughs> uh, the fat bitch in me is getting hard. hyper because we love food. I know they always say the way to a man's heart is through his stomach, but that's the same way with women too. If a man is slave in that kitchen and cook you a good meal and 
wash them dishes and clean the kitchen. That's, that's a requirement. Come on. Deal with me. You got to know how to come cook. You got to know how to roll a blunt at least. That's come it. You can roll the right. They got, they got raw cones, cones for that now. You know what I'm saying? I know, but raw cones. cones, I don't like smoking raw <laughs> cones that much. I have some here and I won't even roll them because they're just like, it's not the same to me. I have oh, some man. on my table somewhere. I like, I like that. Ladies, I hope y'all been taking notes. You know what I'm saying? You better be taking notes. I've been if, trying to help y'all fellas. If you're lucky uh, enough to get up in 40's kitchen, you know what she likes. You know what I'm saying? Dead. <laughs> now, when your DMs go crazy, <laughs> my DMs, and let me tell y'all something don't, don't, send, no, red meat don't send me no unsolicited dick flicks because I have male friends who will send you one right back. Don't fucking oh, play with me. Don't man. fucking send me no dick pics. Send her your steak right picks, real steaks, not, you know. Don't send, send me your personal beef. Okay? Real quick, two, <laughs> two questions that pass by here. I don't want to let them go too far off. One is besides food, what's the other way to your heart? They ain't really shooting a shot. Marijuana and cash. Oh, and the oh. second one was, um, are you working on any music? Yes, yes. I'm actually very excited about that. Probably drop a freestyle tomorrow. Come on, 40. We come on, girl. Tomorrow. Probably another one the next couple of days. I got two dope ass. I got like a lot of good things in work. I wish I could tell you guys what I have going on right now, but I don't know if I can. You can. Oh, we cut the stream off. My man. We'll cut the stream. <laughs> <laughs> We still I have, have, so those in, I have a big, big surprise that's going, I have a big surprise that I can't wait to announce in the next couple of days. Okay, okay. And um, yeah, you guys, you guys will see a lot more of me. We will kick up, we'll keep a look we'll at that. Like that. You guys I can't wait for it. Come on, I'm rooting for you, girl. We got 40 for another five you. minutes, y'all. What else you have to, what else I got to ask her? Uh, Joe Nate wants to know what about coffee? We've talked about coffee already. You know what I'm saying? I'm not Next interested in battling coffee. Tune. If they offered me a significant bag, then I would take it. But as of right now, why? And this is got to be careful. I, I can't really care about battling coffee brown when I'm in talks with battling tsunami surf. You know, that, that doesn't oh, exist. Oh, it just doesn't. Oh, you know what I mean? It's nothing against coffee, just facts. Like, it's we could just tell the coffee. truth and just lay things out and just so everybody's on the same page. Yes, I it's would battle novel. coffee. Yes, I would no. battle coffee. Am I interested in doing it right now? No. If they presented the correct situation, meaning a good bag, yes, I would do it. Am I going to keep talking about battling coffee? No. Why? Because I could possibly battle Tsunami Surf, who makes more sense. Wait, come on. Come on, 40. That's how okay. I hope that answered your question, bro. She can put it no clearer than that. <laughs> oh, if you battle Sue Surf and it's a live audience, if I battle Sue Surf, there. if I battle Sue Surf, I'm, I'm probably not gonna battle coffee. I'm gonna tell you that right now. Or anybody else. Mm -hmm. Once I get served there. After that. Official. Oh, so that is it. Loud. Y'all gonna hate me. Official. That is it. <laughs> um, Would you ever battle on the roof? Mm hmm. Hell yeah. I better anywhere they bring my bag. There you go, man. Somebody asked, um, you've never been on King of the Dot. Would you battle there? And if so, against who? I was actually supposed to battle DNA on King of the Dot the day before I battled Shayna Ashley. He backed out of our battle, and that's the reason why I have not been back on King of the Dot, because they wanted me to come back and battle for free because he didn't show up, and I don't play that shit. Mm. Battle for mm. free? I guess they felt as though they compensated me for the battle that he didn't show up for. To me, those are two different situations, so... Yeah. I agree. Wow. I agree. So, yeah. That's so I, crazy. I, I, me, and, me and the dad battle chain Ashley was probably one of the most prepared I've ever been in battle rap. I had six rounds ready to go. All of wow. DNA's rounds memorized. All of fucking. That's probably the most prepared I've ever been in my whole career. My bat. My why did he tonight. back out? Do you know why? I don't know. I know he was supposed to battle Dirtbag Dan that night too. So, um, yeah. Can't yeah, shine battle him instead. Yeah, yeah. So it ended up, yeah, so that didn't happen. That was um, a couple years ago. Yeah, one of the same night before I battled Shayna Ashley. So um, I don't know what happened. I don't think he like backed out or played me. I just think he didn't pull up to the whole event or whatever. So They asked here, if you were asked to be a judge on Ultimate Madness 2, would you do it or would you be a judge for any future events? Yeah, I would do it. I think I wouldn't, I don't know if I'd be a good judge. You know what I mean? Cause I'm like a sucker low key. Like I'm like softy a little bit. And then I'm kind of biased if it's like my friend or something like that. Like I'm corny like that. So I probably would not be a good judge, but I would do it. Mm. Who's your friends with that's in Ultimate Madness 2? 
I mean, I don't know, not that specific situation. Like, I don't even know who's in Ultimate Madness 2 now that I think about Who's in Ultimate Madness 2? I don't know. But I like certain people. I have reports with certain people, and then other people I might be like, hmm. Someone asked, would you do another two on two? Mm. My manager answered for me and said no. Mm. <laughs> Late graphic <laughs> said no. <laughs> okay, that's, that's the answer. We going with said no. Boy, said it's no. fucked up because I'm trying to tell you like it's fucked up. Like I don't like I don't. I felt like that situation it just was what it was. It didn't pan out. You know what I mean? It, every every team's not going to be a good team just because you have two good players. You know what I mean? It's not necessarily mm. a good team. Everybody's not going to. Well, that's up. true. Like if you was to put LeBron and Kobe together, or Kobe and Michael together, you know what I'm saying? Well, Oh, they, they want the ball. You got two people that want the ball. That ain't always gonna work. So I mean, I can respect that. I don't think I'm not against. I'm not against ever doing one ever in life again. It would have to be like it couldn't just be something that the leagues put together. It have to be a situation I put together with another battler, and we felt as though like, hey, we're gonna go and we can make this happen. Versus, hey, you cool, you cool. They said, so let's do this, let's do this. You know what I mean? So okay, okay. okay. Uh, we'll, we'll end it off with this. An interesting question. What moment in your career did you believe you solidified your greatness? Probably at that battle, Bonnie. Mm. I think at that battle, Bonnie. Um, yeah, I think that's why I was like, oh, okay, I'm a shit. Like, I think. Yeah. After Bonnie? Okay. Yeah, yeah. I had to think about it because I was, like, back and forth with it. But um, why Why the Bonnie performance? After the Bonnie shit, yeah, right? You was on MTV. I was on, like, yeah, I was on MTV and stuff. Sway said that I won and stuff. It is, I just, my performance was flawless. I felt like I looked like money. I felt like that's, it was a big, like, like peak in my, um, my following stuff like that. I noticed I started getting a lot more traction and stuff like that for my social media and stuff like that. It just was a lot of things kind of really popped after that battle with Bonnie as far as my um my fan fair. So I think probably around then. That's incredible. That's well, what's up. Forty, we thank you so much for your time today. You know you had plans and uh we went back and forth, but you made time for little old us. So we appreciate thank it. You, girl. We appreciate it for real. For anytime, real. anytime. And we look forward to these announcements you got going on. Yes, yes. Very listen, watch when y'all see. Word, man. Y'all are gonna want me, y'all gonna want me back my hair. Y'all gonna want me back. Once again, shout out 2020 consultant. Yes. Hey, 2020 consultant, <laughs> I hear you. And, and, and your homegirl with the smoke trinklets. What's her what's her situation again? Oh, smoke cute accessories. Smoke right, cute so, accessories. Salute, support black businessman 40. We can't thank you enough. We got one of the goats on the podcast, and uh, now we can uh, all chill and relax and enjoy the rest of the weekend, man. So thank you for your time, 40. We greatly appreciate it. And thank everybody out there, thank you for tuning in as always. We'll be back next Monday. And again, yeah. starting that Monday, we'll be on four days a week, Monday through Thursday. Yes. Yo, we hey, 40, you kill yourself. <laughs> hey, we turn it up. Peace. Good shit, 40. Oh, good shit. Am I supposed to still be on here? Right. Oh. Uh, took care of that. All right.